Oh my god! Holy moly! Thank you for the love! You guys. Guy. Look at guys. all those zeros! That's crazy. <laughs> Guys. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, if it, if it was text to speak, it would just be, thank you for the one. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. I think. Ooh, we're gonna Let's get here. our DM some AC. <laughs> <laughs> But hello, everybody. Oh my god. We, I guess we're just stacking rewards now, because that's the second level 7 hype train in two weeks. Um, Party one. Thank you so fucking much. If you're expecting words to come out of my mouth, um, I... <laughs> you know? Um... Sincerely, thank you guys so 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 much. It helps keeping, it helps. Yeah, words. Who? Uh, it helps to keep this show running more than you can even imagine. Um, and we are all in immensely great. Like, I wish you could just peek through the window of of our free accounts before the show starts, and you guys are just getting us to a level seven hype train, and we're just like, what? <laughs> Just a casual um, level seven, as they do. Yeah, it's real, it's real casual. Um, but thank you guys so much. It is hugely appreciated, Rockstory Vivi. Um, uh, Vivi is in V. I don't know why. I call, there's just so much V. There's so ah. So, so um, many Vs and so many zeros. Thank you, Rockstory, yeah, for the sub. You. Thank you, V, for the gift sub thank you roxy for the yum yums thank you scorpio for the yum yums thank you v for the hella hugest yum yums donation ever thank you roxy for the yum yums and thank you v for more yum yums God thank you jc thank you thank you this amazing, All guys. yeah thank you guys so much yeah I know we never addressed it before, but I just thought it would be, you know, just to put everything out on the table. I do not split the revenue whatsoever. This all goes to me. Um, they do not get anything. Uh, I actually have dirt on all of them, and they are all forced to be here. So thank you all so much yeah. for giving me just, more money and no money for any of them. Yeah. We just say thank you, but we are not getting anything, so... And they never did. Thank you. Never from from Session Zero, they he's, didn't get anything. He's just pulling our strings, and we're dancing uh -huh. to his tune. Yeah, I had to pull in Val. Is that a 1911, JC? Well. Yeah. It's very pretty. Could you point it that way, please? I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Holy moly. Um... I, I gotta I gotta think what what lore drop is is worthy of a of stack level sevens man. M Maka said level ten hype train friends becomes a lesser deity. <gasps> hey, <laughs> just putting it out there. One just of the out. types of warlocks is packed to the chain where you get a familiar. I don't know. I'm just saying. What a friends the familiar. No warlocks on the team. Oh fuck. <laughs> Well, technically, we don't know what Ludo is, but Warlock just had a thing that most fits into Esimic vibes. Yeah, none of the classes um, were uh, screwed. They didn't have a screwed. <laughs> like... No, that's Bart. Um, ah. hey. um, but hello, you guys. I hope you've had a phenomenal week, a phenomenal day, phenomenal times. Thank you for supporting and being hype. Even just being hype, like th that means all the world as well. Like we're just like coming up in here. And it's like people have already chatted, and we're like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, <block three. laughs> but it is ever so, ever so good to see you. Um, in case you haven't been here before, hello. We are here, and we are about to introduce you to our wonderful players for today and for this wonderful campaign. Um, there's a lot of names. Should we speed run it? Should yes. we just... Okay. <laughs> no, not, not you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just gonna take a breathe oh, in. Oh, your favorites here. 
Maka's no, here. Read the names. Read the names. Maka. Wait. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Maka's okay. here. Father. Your father. Maka. I'm gonna do a deep breath in and then just go as fast as I can. All right. <laughs> Roxury, Marcus, Scorpio, every gaming gems, never on the PP face. Roxury again, Rips, Valpheus, Roxury again, Scorpio, Rihanna, Rihanna, Sobe, V, Maka, Maka, Kakasaya, Scorpio, Roxury, V, Valpheus again, Roxury again, Subdued, Maka, Maka, Epic Gaming Jam, Scorpio, Maka, Maka, Subdued, V, Roxury, Subdued, Scorpio, Scorpio, V, Scorpio, Maka, Maka, V, Subdued, Roxury, V, Me, Dime. Again. Ah, shit. Okay, one more breath. And then JC and then Roxory and then some dude, and then I think that's everybody so far. Keep going, we're gonna see him. No father, baby face, doing a lot of little smileys today. It's very nice. And then we came back, and then we got lots of bitties. Then we got Mikey Sanchez 2004. Ever, ever. And then we got no father pee pee face again. I just love saying the name. Marka! Hi, Marka! And then we got subs, and then we got Epic Gaming Jams, and then we got everybody, and then we got Akakase 25, and then we got, and then we got, and then we got, and then we got those, everybody. I got some air left too. Let's go. Yay! And now I, and now I faint. Um, but no! Now we're gonna introduce you to our wonderful players. <gasps> In what order? Uh, any mini money. This is good. This is good. This is good. And then, and then Ludo. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Hi, Ludo. Hello. Oh right. Uh, hi, I'm JC, <laughs> and uh, I play Ludo Bayani. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm happy you're all here. Thank you so much for the level seven. My God, I was lying earlier when I said the revenue is split. It actually, uh, is, uh, it is, it is, I was going to make a political joke, but maybe it's not in good taste. Happy, happy, <laughs> happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and hello, I'm Bruno Nicole Hall. You, you just missed your name getting read, so you get a special wave. You're the new Maka now. <laughs> I'm pretty cool! Oh, hello. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God, my laughs are turning into seagulls. Um, so, uh, yay! So we got JC, and then we got Darian Audio as Tarquin! Hi, you Hey, everyone. I'm doing fine, thank you, and I hope everyone here is fine as well. I'll be playing the part of Tarquin, and I Woo. wanted to tell you that with your generous contributions and donations, I was able to steal some of JC's treasure and bought myself a pizza. <gasps> so, <laughs> thank you so much Whoa. for that because it has tomato, garlic, and lots of cheese, and I love it. Hell yeah. How do you feel about that, JC? You'll be hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of pizza and lawyers, just dubious segues today, why not? Uh, we have the amazing time package as before the stairs. Hello! You know, some people say <laughs> the Tales of the Torn Veil wasn't gonna make it. But then I look out at all the faces of you chatters out there, and I realize that we are here. We have come, and we coming for you, other dice rollers out there. We coming for you. What's up, everybody? Hello. How you doing? I'm Dime Fuck Package. Him. I play before the stairs, and thank you so much for your support. Oh my god. <laughs> it's incredible. What? Incredible. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> hey, Rubes! Can you do better? Hi, Camellia. How you doing? <laughs> Can you Hi! Hi, Rubes! I play Camellia, and please know that <laughs> all the money I get from here goes toward goob treats. Oh! <laughs> oh. So the more you give, the more treats you get. Yay! And Thank you as we all know, Goob, Goob is the strongest wrestler, undefeated mm -hmm. champion. Mm -hmm. <gasps> That's okay, I'm 
remember Nicole Hall? We were just saying you missed your name getting right the first time, so now you're the new Maka. So everybody say, hi, I'm Nicole Hall. I'm Nicole And then we did that before, but you missed it because of the ads. So we're back to do it again. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but also welcome. And of course, last but not least, he's been here the whole time. Uh, Danny the Dumb Dwarf, played by Valfias. Hi guys, with your generous <laughs> contributions, I too can avoid homelessness. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the sweetest little- Hi guys. <laughs> I was not expecting that. That was amazing. I didn't know how to follow up everything else that happened, so I was just no, like, was... you know. Hi guys. It was just hi, like, how's it going? 2014 vlog opening. I love it. It's just like, Val, it's just you like need Danny to be on PBS. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> yes! I would watch that. Oh my goodness. What a what a cracking start. Um so yeah. If you haven't been here before, welcome to the Tales of the Torn Veil. Vale. What's the story? I don't know. The, the Torn Veil. Vale. The veil. Vale. It is torn. Um if only there were a veil vale guard, but alas that is a different series and a different title that came out after ours. Um, so <laughs> sorry. Um Thank you, Scorpio. Also, mod love to Scorpio. My God. Um, but uh, indeed, we are consisting of the amazing Breakfast Club group here of adventurers, a group which has been tasked by both a cool, very knowledgeable bunny lady, but also the the ancient gods themselves, brr, um, indirectly. Uh, have been tasked with preventing evil from seeping through these new tears in the veil of the arcana and the world and the realm and also to stop any potential evil mean unworthy forces from becoming a false deity otherwise known as an altar uh, through a progress through a progress through a process Called transmogrification, if you want to get technical with it. I know there are some law fiends out there. That one's for you, babies. I see you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that is kind of their general mission. Uh, so far, it's, you know, one could argue that the task is not going great because they have um, indeed helped to found uh, a temple for an, a, a god they know to be an altar. Um, so, you know, slightly reverse progress, but yeah. that is the nature of the world. We are here to uh, enable each other, both as players and as DMs, and to see First what we happens. we think we're their allies. <laughs> <laughs> then and we wait for them to sleep. <laughs> see what happens in this phenomenal world with our wonderfully chaotic characters. And with that, hi. I'm Key. I always forget I'm here. Um, I am the DM, aka the Dungeon Master, even if there aren't particularly any dungeons, and there certainly aren't any dragons, as they have been extinct in Isafray for thousands of years. But I am here to help again, once again, enable our wonderful players, uh, but also to play everyone else in the fucking world, I guess. Uh, if they talk to a rock using druidic magic, speak to plants, I'm that rock now. Will I have prepared what that rock has to say? Probably not. Will you guys know that I haven't prepared what that rock's gonna say? Probably, hopefully not. <laughs> but I am here to facilitate the world, the events of the world, the heroes, and indeed the villains, and the natural course of nature, the arcane, and the stars. So, uh, fuck, I get, do you wanna, do you guys wanna, like, play D&D? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that why we're here? I think, I think, I mean, we could play Jenga, but it'd be a bit awkward. You can try it. Uh, yeah. Man, I thought this was a Call of Duty lobby. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough slurs for it to be a Call of Duty movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that. Um, <laughs> yeah, get back in here, Shorty. 
cupcake today. <laughs> oh, shit. Just called Danny the Dapper Dwarf Shorty. Shorty! Can we D&D nerd here? Hell yeah. It's time to be cool. Wait till we come and cross an entire anthill. Well, that would be crazy. Um, You're off stream. Off stream. That one is on the screen. It is, isn't it? Look at that. Holy face. Oh, he rolled on that one, you guys. I'm just, yeah, yeah. I was just getting it out of the way, just you know, yeah, so it wouldn't, that's fair. it wouldn't affect anything important later. And it's, and you know, it's fine because I off stream rolled another natural twenty. Uh, who for? Guess we're gonna find out as we play today's episode of Segway of Tales of the Torn Vale. I should have saved it a little bit, dragged it out, and then been like, Tales of the Torn Vale. I don't know what song to do next, so we'll pick this one and hope for the best. So, last time. On Tales of the Sun Oh, the brothel song. Why not? Um, so. I was wondering why it was so familiar. <laughs> Last time, the group made their way to Jinwa, a northern mountainous. Uh, started to go Minsky then. <laughs> the northern mountainous fucking city in the mountains to the north. Would you believe? Uh, in a region uh, called Lorraine. Uh, Lorraine, depending on whereabouts you are from. Some people just are like, no, nah, that's Lorraine. Some people are like, Lorraine. There is a, there is a way of saying it. Um, anyway, they made their way to Genoa uh, for two primary reasons. Uh, one, to pick up a um, person that will help basically do their tasks while they are off away dealing with deities and gods alike um, by the name of Baltimore's Proud Reach, a Leonin uh, rapscallion uh, who indeed they did meet and uh, just, yeah it was very chill, he was just like yeah I'll come along, I'll get on your ship and off we go, all that good stuff um, and the second goal while there was one of a more personal nature, which was to Fulfill the rest of their deal with Actilaneth. Now, Actilaneth, for those who missed it, is a demonic, devilish deity. And, as the group found out thanks to the very secretive deity Harpesh, actually themselves a false god, one of which the group arguably um, have been set out to find and incapacitate. However, a deal Oops. was a deal. Oopsie. Uh, a deal was a deal, and to aid their friend Luca, um, they beat away. I was about to say beat off, because that is like a British phrase for like getting real. <laughs> um, you know what? Fuck it. They beat <laughs> off a bunch of devils yeah, and uh, Cambians alike. I'll be down, Pensy. <laughs> and. Uh, Though we almost lost Tarquin to the shadowy depths of a cavern where no, I don't think any of us particularly knew where it was going to go. Um, the fight was successful, the ritual took place, and a temple for Actilaneth was built in the centre lake of Jinhua. And our team comes from there, having successfully fulfilled their mission. Now all that's left is to tie up any loose ends before leaving and returning, presumably, back to Ninut to see what their next mission is. Now, their loose ends consist of maybe shopping, maybe buying anything else they might need to, saying goodbye to some new friends, and also checking up on one Kentignastir Abelard an evil, manipulative bard who was to do a concert before the group intervened in a heist and l left him somewhere in a trunk. Is he still there? I suppose. We're about to find out. So. You guys have just come from... 
Fuck it. You guys have just come from beating off the devils <laughs> and erecting a new temple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. What would the group like to do? Uh, last we left off, uh, you were just walking back into town after parting ways and saying goodbye to Luca. Um, worth noting, as is wont to happen occasionally, uh, you see a uh, portal open and reclose as uh, Danny the Dapper Dwarf once again re-manifests in uh, this world. Danny, you see a slightly, uh, slightly beat up, um, ruffled team, uh, seemingly having just come out of combat, but alive and well, and seemingly having a good day. Given, given all the paperwork that Danny has had to do, I imagine that he also looks beat up, you know, <laughs> bl bl bleary eyed, barely able to to put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Oh. See, so see, so all I've had a rough one of it too, huh? You could say that. Wait, don't you work at like a company or something? Yeah. What time is it anyway? What time is it? It is uh kind of mid. mid no. When, it would be kind of mid-afternoon, three-ish, four-ish. The sun is just starting to yellow slightly in the sky as it begins to dip behind the mountain peaks of Genoa, outlining the gorgeous viaducts that encircle the city. Oh, look, you can see it on the screen. I keep forgetting. I'm like, there's just art there. It's <laughs> fucking what it looks like. I'm the city. Just pretend I'm like a mountain with city on it, and then yeah, <laughs> yeah. So about kind of three, four o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I just was, you know, Danny just kind of gets that from looking around. Uh, might be time for a nap. Anyway, that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do we do? We make a temple to a devil. And then later we gotta destroy it. Uh, we did the thing we're supposed to do here. We met the lion man. And now he's waiting for us by the ship. And, uh, Excellent. yeah. I think we're basically done here in Shinwa. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, Danny, I have something. Yeah. What have you got? Take a look. I think you're gonna like it. Look, look, look. Here's a flute and it's shiny. We stole that from Kentuck and Astir. Yep, uh, they hand you a very potently magical flute, uh, which matches the description, the very vague description uh, of the object they gave you at work to oh. collect and return. Thank you very much. And he just kind of like, you know, turns it over in his hands, just kind of studies it a little bit. And, and then he puts it, then he puts it in a sack. Do you know what it does? I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, neither do we. Great. Like, like, like as, as the player character, I don't know if my, I, I don't, I don't know if my character does, but as the player, I've got no idea. <laughs> Would you would you like to roll to find out? Oh sure. Or to try and find out? Uh, anyone who would like to try and find out, that will be an Arcana check for me, please. Uh, Beefon, Camellia, and Danny, you will get advantage on that roll. Ooh. There you go. Uh -huh. Don't say I don't never give you nothing. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, let's get that out of the way. <laughs> there we go. That's so with with advantage, I roll a, a 19. Okay. I got 15. Okay. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Wonderful. Dirty. Um, 30, 20. 
Um, <laughs> Jesus, that was like new. I again, I've just had. I'm just having my my juice for the day, and I get a little sugar rush. So is, is juice is, for the day? How about say is that seven. is that what the kids call it these days? <laughs> the freaking lemonade. I'm better gonna match my freak. <laughs> Um, incredible. <laughs> so, Camellia, you would be able to sense that it is, um, really quite potent magic, but you can't quite tell the nature of it. Uh, Bifon, Danny, uh, uh, did anyone else roll? El oh, Ludo. Sorry, Ludo. And I got a seven, so it's got still a pretty good. Yeah, it's a flute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that it right, that all, music. Oh, that right there. That right there is a flute. Uh, it is. Um, if, if, just out of curiosity, if he had rolled a one, would he think it was a set of drums or something? Like, <laughs> not not a set of no. drums. Um, Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> it's food. I mean, it might. It, I mean, the closest thing to food would be like it's. It's like he's read a story where, it, it's just like a k dumb kid story where something in the room is made out of chocolate and he thinks it's made out of chocolate and just breaks the, <laughs> breaks the magic. He'd on grab the, on it, the flute. play hot cross buns, and a demon would come out <laughs> of the flute. <laughs> no, we yeah. just said bye to Luca. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just just where you've left Luca, just a massive explosion happens. Um, no. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, with your with your rolls, you would both be able to tell that this flute is an enchanted flute. Um, it is, part of me, enchanted, enchanted, so that it is able to charm any or potentially charm anyone who can hear its music being played mm. so man danny like i have to say <laughs> when you when you insight checked kentigan asked here for for being uh a bit suspicious with the sentence like uh charm people with his music this is the item that he would use for that, but that isn't what he was going to do at the concert, and I felt so bad, because I was like, he, he's he got fucking Kenta Ganastir's fucking number, <laughs> but not I was just, on the I specific did, look, thing. I, I don't know if it was, like, the way you paused partway through that sentence, but something was, yeah. like, something tipped me off. It was like, oh, you know, yeah. there's, something, there's something weird going no, on here. No, you were correct to be suspicious, it, but for the area that you specifically like insight checked on there was no deception there and it was like oh fuck <laughs> so close I mean, it was really charming he was really <laughs> charming <laughs> but yes um you can tell that he would very likely have used this multiple times um to charm an entire audience it is not unlikely and now it's in the hands of danny the dapper dwarf <laughs> It is, and your boss really wants it back. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Fucking evil wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Do either of you feedback your discovery to the team? Well. Uh... Oh, that's one charming flute. <laughs> no, I mean literally, guys. It's a charm flute. Oh, v very dangerous. So I'm going to be taking it uh, back to back back home soon. Oh, uh, for who? The the fragmentium. It's where Danny works. Yeah. No. Why? Because it's dangerous. In the wrong hands, empires can rise and fall with the use of this thing. Yeah, so I ask again, who are you bringing it to? It, to, to my bosses for safekeeping. I, I think he's trying to ask who your bosses are and why should we trust them with the flute. 
Uh, but, uh, but please, correct me if I'm wrong, Bivon. I don't want to put words into your mouth. So, the company I work for, like, their entire purpose is to, um, protect the other realms from dangerous artifacts like this. They send people like me out to gather said items and, um, essentially put it in a vault not to be used. Oh. Mm -hmm. And who runs this company? Okay, okay, I don't re remember the name of my CEO. <laughs> I'm getting the paperwork out. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, 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 let me get my glasses. Studied, <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't studied this dossier in like three weeks. I'm, there is there is the, the, the quick corporate structure that has the CEO on it. Um, your CEO, Camelia, you would also know this. Mm, I was pulling mine out too. <laughs> uh, Feiltar, Feiltar Memoire. Okay. Is the boss so, the big so, CEO boss? Your so I... specific bosses are mm -hmm. um, uh, Foss Erinyar and Briar Leithros. So hmm. I just I just throw those names at them without any like context. Like those are my bosses. <laughs> <laughs> Failed to... okay. Yeah, he just eats the names. Failed to remember <laughs> Foss Erinyar Briar Leithros. Please don't make me say those. <laughs> also, maybe mentions Novus Pettigan, Karadik Bicus, and Falwa Radation. Um, oh, I think I used to date her. <laughs> All right, I'm just checking. I know you're just doing your job. Um, Darkwood, do you still have a brain? <laughs> oh, yes, I have two one in my head and the other one in a jar. <laughs> what maybe are you, you interested wanna, about? Maybe you want to offload it on the kid here. What? Unless you want to keep dragging it around with you. You think it's dangerous? Do you have a brain? He just said it in his head. I am very smart. It's pretty good well, protein. That's, just... <laughs> that's not what I mean. <laughs> well, he also is carrying around a Mind Flayer brain. You want to take a look? I'm sure it's worth a lot of money, so I'm carrying it with me. Maybe someone will want to buy it. Or eat it. Or eat it if it's tasty <sighs> enough. How much are you thinking you want for it? I don't know, a lot of gold. Lot of Do you gold. know how much this is valued? <laughs> Miss DM, Lady Mamser, can I do like a check to see if I would know how much it's worth? Um... It... It... It, it would... Um... Hmm. <laughs> the cogs, they turn and... Um, the wheels are turning, but the hamsters are on strike. You would get a different price at it depending on where you go. Um, yeah. But you can roll a... Wouldn't it be a history check? Just a straight intelligence check for, like, where you would get the most bang for your buck. How I do intelligence again? I click on the big number the up here. Big, the big one. Okay. So that's a 12. Um, you're not particularly familiar with anyone in this realm that would, uh, that would barter for a, for a mind flare brain. Uh -huh. But it's probably pretty valuable. Well, see, my thinking was if I could, uh, I'd be like, you know, if, if Danny could get it off of Tarquin for, you know, a relatively cheap amount, he could sell it in the Fey Realm for more. You could certainly try. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's all on your RP, man. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so Danny is like, you know... L looking at the jar, looking at the brain, like eyeing it from different angles, you know, just doing doing a general inspection of the the, the gooiness inside. Well, I, uh, I tell you what, Tarquin, if uh, you're tired of lugging it around, I could take it off your hands for uh, let's say seven gold. I was thinking a hundred, but uh, we can make. Huh? 
Yes, of course. It's uh, mm. When was the last time you got one of these brains? It's been quite a while, I'll admit. Um... <laughs> hmm, 100, you say? How does 70... How does 70 strike your fancy? Mm, 70? Mm, yes, I could do that. You could sell it for 100 yourself, or maybe even more. <laughs> Alright, 70 it is! And, and uh, Danny, like, extends his hand to, to shake to seal the deal. Alright, my friend. You have yourself a very nice ex example of a... Well, mind flayer brain. Keep it safe, because... It might uh, start to get a little disgusting in a while. Yeah. This stuff can still be dangerous too. And then Danny just like puts it in in his in his sack. <laughs> so minus seventy. I'd also while while you're there, Val, uh, uh -huh. feel free to roll a little perception check for me. Oh, okay. I'll I'll do that first. Perception. Son of a. <laughs> The six. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I sense nothing amiss, right? Carry carry on with your merry day, my good sir. Yeah. <laughs> valid. Valid. <laughs> Same. 61, 62, 63, 64. <laughs> okay. So it was 70. Move. <laughs> this is exactly what's happening. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna find out that when mind flayer brains go bad, they turn into a whole new mind flayer. That would suck. Oh, I'm hoping I get it in into the fair realm before that happens. <laughs> Why did you say it like that, Key? Because that was the most suspicious thing I could say after <laughs> what was said previously. I don't have to be an evil DM, but I can be fucking suspicious. <laughs> I'm uh, that's being suspicious is a free action. Uh, <laughs> you guys do it all the time too. DM, can I? Well, what's the nearest cult fucking statue we can go? In? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, okay. So. um... As that deal is being done, Umberlai kind of puts her hands on her fists. Hands on her fists? Hands mm -hmm. on her hips. Fists on her hips. <sighs> right. Um, I think I'm ready to go and deal with Kentaganaster. I think I've decided what, what? I want to he do. He isn't in jail, whatever we decided to do with him? Well, he's still in the trunk where we left him. He's been... Oh. Been keeping him in there for safekeeping, huh? You well, yeah, want us to go with you? Maybe we well, should have poked some holes in it. No. Nah, I imagine he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for once, Danny, I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, did... There might be other things in his room we can get a hold of. Especially if that flute was in his room. Could be all sorts Ooh. of valuable things. Danny's already he's like... Off. Well, at this point, Danny's already like five steps ahead of y'all, walking back <laughs> down, re 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 ready to loot. Danny finally, bless him, back to normal speed as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> after so long. Um, of course, yes. that's still slower than everybody else, so y'all just pass me on the way. Bifon takes two steps and catches up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you all make your way to the opera house. You do see uh, there are a few of the town guard kind of around the entrance uh, looking at the uh, carriage skid marks and crash site uh, that was where the... Uh, Horse and carriage just crashed straight into the front uh, of the building in just pure chaos uh, fashion, which was beautiful. Um, Umbrella kind of looks to you all as you begin to approach. Should we perhaps take a slightly more 
stealthy approach, considering our last hurrah here. There's a side door around the side. Oh, you're so right. Yes, um, yeah, let's go. Um, you, you all just, like, go around the side door. <laughs> Um, it's, a very, it's, it's a very aptly named door because it's off to the yeah. side. Uh, Danny, <laughs> you don't get to do many just of these. Just wave at Angus on the way by. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's still at the he's still at the brothel. He's still at the brothel. Um, he is. When did we take him? I thought we left him. I don't know uh, what's going on. Never mind. Go ahead. He, he's just he's just ambling about. He's just having his own adventure now. He's he's finally um, free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Danny, high or low? Hi. 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 Oops, that's it. How's it going? Um, as you turn the corner to go into the side entrance, um, you <laughs> you guys all see uh, a slightly frantic and worried-looking uh, theater worker. Luto, you immediately recognize this man, this uh, tiefling man, to be one BFF FL um, Cosmo. Oh, nice, it's Cosmo. Um, A friend of you... yours? Yeah. Well, Danny immediately starts to go up and say hello. Oh my god. Hi, Cosmo! Wait, didn't you tell them that your mom isn't dead? <laughs> His face. Oh yeah, huh? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, I, Danny overhearing this immediately like takes a step back. He's like, <laughs> "Oh wait, never mind." Cosmo's face drops and just, "Oh, come back to do more damage." I take it. Fix Do-do-do. it, hopefully. Dead mother. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Why shouldn't I call the guard right now? Oh, because we'll beat you up. <laughs> you well, my friend here is trying to say, Cosmo, <laughs> <laughs> if you're willing, maybe we can put in a good word for you at the brothel. You're looking he for a job, right? He kind of, with the, uh, with the, with Ludo's comment, he kind of, like, keeps his face exactly where it was, but his eyes just go to the side, <laughs> and then, and then he shifts into himself as you begin to speak, and then kind of confused puppy, like, head tilts at, a good word at, you, to work at the brothel, or to, in, to, both, both? You're a great host, what can I say? You helped us out so much. We can see what we can do. He, like, tucks a bit of hair behind his ear. Um. I, he's gonna roll. He's gonna roll an insight check, and if he rolls low, it will be very funny. <laughs> yes! That's a three. <laughs> that is a three. That's the happiest low roll um, I think I've ever heard. <laughs> he he tucks some hair behind his ear and just looks at you all and just goes, "Um, you all DTF?" Uh, look at Umberlay. Down to fuck, darling. Down to fuck. No, I know. I mean, oh, are you? That's what that means. Oh, always. I didn't understand either. I mean, now. Well, n- not now. I was just w- wondering where that suggestion came from. I, uh, I, I, can I mean, you can to talk Baker's to them. I was or... just going to suggest that you be a host, but... Yeah, maybe you'll lose your job here because you did such a bad job, and then we can get what? you a new job at the brothel. Little, I, can't, little, I didn't do a bad job. I, uh. I was just trying to help you out because you're such a famous chef. Were the Cosmo crisps not good? I'm sorry, I thought they were very delicious. I... I didn't really eat any of them because I was so hurt, if I'm honest. Oh, I'll make you a new batch. I just gotta find a new, uh... uh protein. Oh, no, I, I still... I, I still have them. Oh, good, good. 
Look, wh why are you here? What do, what do you what do you want? Look, we just need to go uh, inside. I yeah? left something upstairs. I really need to get it. It's very important. Yeah. Oh, well, what is it? I can go and get it for you without eliciting any suspicion. Well, it's kind of heavy. Oh, so you want to fuck me, but you don't think I'm strong enough to lift something. I never said... Okay, look, uh, there's a <laughs> trunk upstairs that we need to get. Hold on, okay. I, think, I think I might have a solution to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we haven't um, really seen many of Danny's solutions to things <laughs> yet, so... This is as much of a threat as I can feel as a DM. I'm waiting patiently. <laughs> 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 Alright, so I'm gonna cast a level 3 command. Oh! Hmm. Okay. Alright, let me just go ahead and do that. <laughs> uh, one sir. word. Yes. Oh, 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 is it just one word? It's one I, word. I thought I could do like a whole sentence. Oh, I'll, I'll allow a little flavor of full sentence and then you like do the these aren't the jedi you're looking for hand wave and then okay say the okay. word <laughs> i got you <laughs> my good man i understand you're trying to salvage what's left of your job here but could you kindly walk away and i like wave my hand as i say walk away i don't know if you will allow two words there but hey danny uh-huh high or low Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm, you know what, I'm gonna go for low this time. Okay, because if it, I'm saying if it's high, he's gonna walk in an undefined direction. <laughs> <laughs> if it's low, he's gonna walk away. <laughs> Why, I hate one word spells like this. Alright, I will roll a second dice. Northeast, southwest. He begins to walk, but directionality is on your side. He begins to walk the other way. Away right, from the guys. group and away from the door oh. towards the entrance. All right, guys, the, the way is clear. Let's go. Hey, uh, Does anybody Danny? have a sleep spell or something? Yeah, what's up, Luto? That spell, does it uh, also change his memory or...? Don't a believe so. That's not important. No. It's Maybe we've not. dealt a little bit too much in modifying memory spells. I think it's rather un 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 unseemly. Well, let's Look, go I quickly think... because he's gonna go get somebody who's gonna go stop us. So. Yeah, he's on room uh, mode. He's he's, he's gonna, gonna... <laughs> bounce into a wall and change direction. As a he'll, he'll 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 be walking for a while. It's fine. Let's go. <laughs> We're taking right. him with us when we leave, okay? We put that guy through <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh you my god! Just, I'm, just, I'm just helping him get his steps in. Oh my god. Yes. I wondered when you guys would adopt a whole ass man. Alright, so <laughs> you head to Kentigan Astier's room as you left it. Um, the door closed, but not locked. Unless you locked it. Easy enough to unlock. Do you do anything before opening the door and entering the room? Mm, general inspection. Listen oh, okay. at the door, look around, make sure everything is the way we left it. Perception or investigation check, please. Okay. And anyone can join in. It's a group game after all. You chat. You can also join in and roll investigation I or perception. I really it might don't not do need anything. to roll a 20 on a fucking perception. Thanks. <laughs> but sure, <laughs> I guess I did. Oh, I need to... You see that the doorknob is really shiny. I that's, guess. <laughs> that's, that's how you know you've been playing D&D too long is when you get a nat 20 and you're like, for this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a dirty 20. Is that good? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, a what? What did you get? A dirty 20. There you go! Dada. Welcome to the team! <laughs> <Dada>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
a Zarda Twano. Okay. Zarda Twano. Damn, we got some higher rolls going on here. Maka Maka got a five. <laughs> it's um, a door Maka. It's for the one, Val. You've blessed us. <laughs> Chat is like, it is door. It has <laughs> Kentaganas, their name on it. It is door. How to Anyone, turn <laughs> Anyone who gets above a ten, um, you know that it is a push and not a pull door. What in the Final Fantasy XIV? Oh, okay. I got a 20 plus 6. <laughs> I can see through the fucking door. Yeah. So can volcanoes. Volcanoes can also see through the door. Oh my god, we got three people three people getting that 20 on fucking door. Okay. I think Cosmo Very... left some dust on here. Fuck him. <laughs> well... It is funny, right? Let me have a look are we at these not, Are we not adopting him at, at all, then? <laughs> Gotta catch him first. <laughs> um, he's just walking. He's he walking off into the ocean. <laughs> Alright, so we have Perception from Danny. That's a six. It is... How many? What? Oh, no. Wrong one. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Dirty 20 from Danny. And a 19 from Tarquin. Um... Well, I would say you all notice that it's weirdly quiet, and not just because, like, you locked a guy in a trunk and you imagined he'd be trying to break his way fucking out. Um, there's just a very eerie, still atmosphere as well. I mean, last time you were here, there was a show going on, there was... Loads of people backstage running around, like, the whole theatre feels, in this moment, incredibly empty. It's quite ominous. Before. Is the door locked? Oh, yes. No. Uh, you got that 20, you get more. Um, okay. I'm gonna tell you all about this door. Walnut. <gasps> <laughs> what kind of trim does it have? Um, gilded silver. Well, it looks like gilded silver, but it's actually just paint. It's not good. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, Budget so cuts. like the like the rest of us would be and... fooled. Budget cuts for the arts, man. It's hitting. Oh God. What? Expected better from him. What you know? That I loved. I love. I love when you roll natural twenties on things because I get to say the incredible line. You've been practicing your arcana. <laughs> <laughs> You've been working on your arcana. You got you... a new prescription. You <laughs> see so well now. <laughs> yeah, you find a monocle on the ground, it is perfectly <laughs> just exactly what you need. You hear bird song. You are inside. Shouldn't be but... hearing bird song. Oh, gotcha. You also, as you inspect the door to see if there are any traps or anything, which there are not, you feel an unusual draft through the cracks of the door to the side, the bottom, the top, and the hinge side. I am going Something to... has occurred in the room. You know not what, but... Ruh-roh. I am going to slowly open the door and we're all going to poke our heads in like Scooby-Doo. Yes, it's been too long since the and last And Bifon then lets out a nice little... Oh, shit. What? Why? Ah. Well. Everybody you see the room exactly as it was left. You see the trunk. You see all of the posters, except the one the Camellia took. You see a miraculous, a miraculous, not miraculous, I know what I'm saying. A miraculous and Tim Whistleless desk. You see Kent Ganaster's Abelard's dressing room. Before with your natural 20, you see through the illusion. Almost instantly. 
you see the shrapnel hiding behind this veil of illusion. You see the ceiling debris on the ground. Feel the wind coming from outside. You see the vacuous hole that has been created in the ceiling. Presumably the one from which Kentaganastir destroyed his trunk and escaped to safety. And with your natural 20, because not just door, not just illusion, but also, you find a small, dark feather on the ground. Kentigan Astir had pale wings when last you saw him. And that is what you see. Did Kentika and Aster digivolve? <laughs> I'm going to take the feather. Um, I'm going to ask everybody, hey, you guys feel a draft in here? Then we're going to look at Umbrella and say, you want to dispel this? Uh, no. <laughs> she kind of looks like <laughs> at first she she looks confused and then she looks in realization like there's something to dispel and she's like it's just just oh, no, give I it don't. that grandpa nod <laughs> yes yes dear <sighs> and you see as she waves a hand and dispels the magic and you all see the broken trunk just pulverized from within Leading up to a hole through the roof, through the ceiling, and out into the sky of Jinra above. All right, guys, let's get to looting. <laughs> that was going to be my line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll an investigation check, everybody. All righty. For loot. You said investigation. Yeah, I did. Oh man, thank you. I just want to make sure. I want to, didn't want to <laughs> click. Oh, oh, I got another dirty twenty. Oh my goodness gracious! Be on the roll today. Again, uh, now thank you for it. that one. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, really didn't get all the bad rolls out the way. I got nineteen, eleven, twenty, five. Ludo. Kentaganastir's not in here. He's where not even he in here. Where is, you, you, you don't know where he's hiding. You haven't even looked up. Like, you're just like, <laughs> wait. <laughs> it's like me in a video game when there's a puzzle. It's like, wait, how did he leave? <laughs> where is he gone? <laughs> like, is he under the bed? Is he under the desk? Is he under the desk? And it's like, oh, I see. But yeah. Just no no ceiling as far as uh, Ludo is concerned. It's just like, where the fuck is this guy? Um, everybody else... Uh, Tarquin, you see Ludo not being able to find the ceiling. <laughs> um, and you also find... Um, let's call it a couple of bits of costume jewellery that are worth... a gold in total. Um... I'll take uh, it. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you could, you, you, I mean, you don't have to, but... Uh, everyone no, I do, else... I do. I everyone else... Who got the highest? Did Danny the David Wolf get the highest? He did. Uh, everyone else, you find various jewellery um, and uh, trinkets and bits and bobs of, of uh, Kentaganastir signed goods and uh, <laughs> parts for a grand total of five gold each. Danny the Daffodorf. As you're looking around the room, something shiny catches your eye from inside the, what, well, what used to be inside the trunk, but is now just the base of the trunk, no longer attached to its four walls. Okay. See little do, point do, do I sense any kind of like potentially dangerous magic or anything coming from this shiny thing? Rolling on a corner check. 
Arcana check, okay. And if it's low, the answer's gonna be no regardless. Well, it's, it, it's low. Or it. even it's really good magic and you should put it on immediately. Um, um. Not that not that foolish, but uh, Danny does pick it up because it's six. shiny. Yep, that's valid. Not that you can tell. I can't tell that it's shiny? Uh, you can't tell if there's magic. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's it, shiny, so, so I pick it up. It is a very beautiful um, golden ring, though, and uh, almost like a signet ring. And on the front, you see um, three, with your continued uh, investigation, uh, you see three small slots where little gems could go in. Um, uh. Bifon and Camellia, you both also find a small, dull gem on the floor. Say, approximately a third the size of uh, the main part of a signet ring. We're both looking at the same gem? Uh, different gems, but they both look identical. Ah. Uh... I'm gonna investigate that damn thing, I guess. Alright. Uh, you can do investigation or arcana. I'll look on it. Two slightly different results, depending on which you choose. Same for you, Camilla. Okay. Teamwork. Yeah. Makes the dream work. Hell yeah. I've never seen the dice do this shit. It just hit the corner and stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just boom, six. That's what you get. Yeah. I only rolled yeah. a seven. <laughs> That's I got right. eight. Okay. Mm. Um, beef on you notice it's very tarnished, um, which suggests it is old and probably hasn't done anything in a while, like anything that is tarnished. Yeah, is it, um, is it also maidenless? <laughs> gonna fight you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't well, he's been uh, he's been with us since the beginning, but I guess he's gotta go now. <laughs> <laughs> Crack out the psychic damage. Um, Camellia with a with an eighteen. It's been fun, guys. <laughs> with an eighteen, um, you can see the little kind of marks on the side where it has once been inserted into a ring. Um, just judging from the size happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it is quite small size, which is how you can tell uh, it's for a ring rather than oh, a larger like piece of jewelry. Sad Valentine's Day? <laughs> <laughs> um, un an un-Valentine's Day. Um, you can also sense not magic, not the arcane. You can sense that there was arcana here, and there's just like the very hollow waft of like a dead spell that has been used. Hmm. Uh, I found this on the ground. It looks like it used to have some magic in it. Hmm. Can I do an arcana Wait. check on it? Wait a second. And yeah. Danny, like, huh? Danny, oh, go, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. And then he, Danny, like, holds up the ring, and he, he's trying to gauge if the little thing she has will fit in the sockets. It will. It will. Huh. Apparently these used to go together. Here's the third one. Oh. How many little things did you, little holes were in the ring, did you say? There are three holes, and you found two gems. Mm. <laughs> you think there's a third one around here, any water guys? Um, maybe. Well, 
Danny is looking for a third one. Do I roll another investigation? Yes, please, sir. Okay. Could you sense any magic in it? Whoa, you certainly can. Oh, never mind. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> uh, you can do another arcana check if you want, and uh, Umberlight will help, so you can roll at advantage. If you wish. Okay. The kind of whole unit of ring and ringing games. Uh, yeah, with the 24, you don't find any of the small gems in here. What a wasted roll! <laughs> But you do find a small golden jewel jaw harp. A jeweled jaw harp, if you can even say it. Jeweled jaw harp. Gold. That is worth how much? Three gold. Three gold. I'm just going to add that to. Boom. Another thing you can eat at people and try to sell. <laughs> boing, 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 boing. <laughs> no guys, it's the best instrument. Look. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, with help from um Umberla Bifon, you can tell. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, I'd say that a fifteen, you can tell. You can tell that these two gems both contained the same spell. A very hmm. powerful spell. Mm -hmm. A very specific, very powerful spell. You can tell that this ring was a ring of three wishes. Usually just legendary stuff the, uh, the stuff of legends even um, <laughs> and was very likely um, taken or a gift from a Ginny what now? a gift from a Ginny it's like a Ginny but it's spelled different gotcha D J I N N I E. D J. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was trying really hard not to just be like D J. Ibra Ibra. What? You trying to stop going? <laughs> no. I'm trying. See, I'm trying my best. <laughs> I have some self control sometimes. Ibra <laughs> Ibra. But not always. <laughs> What Never you're saying changed. is you you don't have an error error day. I am nice knowing you, Danny. I am going to take four psychic damage. Re really, <laughs> really, I'm really pushing the line, aren't I? <laughs> I'm taking that damage this time. Oh. Whether it turns to you is a whole other matter. But yes. Um. Umberlai will look at you. She looked at him. He looked at me. Did he? I I, I look back. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did... Don't. Yeah, I'm trying to. Did he? Yeah. Be fun. Yeah. Do you think Kentaganasta wished for this success? Oh, absolutely. Because that's really pathetic, right? But he would... He would, wouldn't he? We have come across so many different elements of charm from a guy who is already kind of charming. He is always trying to hedge his bets. It's not like he doesn't have talent, but he has so many things to boost that talent. Yeah, it is a little pathetic. A Ginny, though? 
what does he have to do for it in exchange for it? For three wishes? I don't know, just how pathetic is he? Not pathetic enough to do something to get three wishes off of a Ginny. Hmm. Is there anything else missing from this piece? Well, there's one more gem. Which could contain another wish. Which, if we mm. got, would be... Life-changingly powerful. If you come upon it, um... Don't... Immediately give it to Luto. You know, like discuss. I think as a group first. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just wanted to. No, no. Same, same page, same book, same but, fucking uh, library. <sighs> Pissed he escaped though. Could, I have this. Anywhere. And I hold up the feather. Think we could track him? I mean, possibly we'd need to find a ranger that's good. And she, her head cranes to Camellia. <laughs> I, just... I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Uh, hi, Camellia. Hi! You're a ranger, correct? Mm-hmm. Can you track people? I can try. Are we going to try to find Kenta Ganastier? Oh, yeah. I mean, mm. yeah, yeah. Look at Kool-Aid, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going off of her. He's I'm going not. off of her energy. That's not. Are we going to get Ken to get Aster? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's not the Kool Aid man. He's the Wasbui Juice man. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Never forget Wasbui Juice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, he will probably try and hunt us down and kill us. Not before we do that first. Oh, kill, I like. Kill, I have this kill, feather us. here. I knew I, like, <laughs> I knew I liked. I liked you, Camellia. Um. Well, should we see if he's here in he's in the city? Here. Oh, in the city. Oh yeah, definitely. He's got fucking wings. He could be anywhere. I. We also kind of beat the living shit out of him. He's not going to get very far. We are also up a mountain. He, he would just need to glide. He doesn't need to flap anywhere, particularly. Um, why are we speculating, Camellia? True, yeah. What can you do with this feather? <laughs> Think you can find him? Um, maybe. Uh, what can I do with this feather? That's a good question. Um... Well, you've got a higher survival bonus, right? Right. I right. Have you? <laughs> yes. No, no pressure. Ooh, um, can I do one thing that might maybe I can help? I don't know. Yeah, of course. Um, I would like to detect magic, the feather. Oh. Why didn't you do that on the ring earlier, Bivon? <laughs> But yes, no, it's a good idea. Absolutely, go for it. I don't know, it's this weird <laughs> thing about... Uh, it's this is weird thing about life. It's like I can only do things once a day for some reason. It's weird. Oh. No, I know. It's, it's Yeah, you get all knackered from doing the spell, and then you're like, oh, do want to do it again. Yeah. I get it. A camellia. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, camellia. So yeah, like, is there anything I could pick up on it? So basically trying to give us like uh, a double edge, like 
You could also track the magic. If there's any magic on it. Or, you know, Whoa. Camellia could... Just giving, just trying to help Camellia out. Roll an Arcana check on it. You do know it is detecting his... magic. No, sorry, with your detect <laughs> no. with your detect magic, you do know that um, he, obviously, when he flew away, was in his Azimar wingy form. Um, but with your detect magic, you know that Azimar can't stay in their wingy form all day every day. Ooh. Okay. Unless that was one of his wishes. There's always going to be the proviso now that unless that was one of his wishes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the unspoken rule. Um, with a 14... Yeah, you would know that there is no other magic on his wings other than Azimari stuff. Um, and it's... I'm um, looking to see if that can be used uh, to help Camilla yeah, track I it. would. I would say it would, it would give a plus two bonus to anything Camellia rolls on tracking. Not quite a advantage, but it would do. It would do. It would do plus two. It would do plus two. Why? Because I fucking see Sorry, I don't know if I did. did if I said come no, on, No, you're sorry. good. That was weird. No, you're good. <laughs> um, what said the Muppets on the line? Camellia. <laughs> e oh, you still got your your jumps. I forget your jumps. Um, other. Um, yeah, you would be able to, um, ooh, yeah, your survival is fairly large. Um, and then I have plus three proficiency, proficiency bonus. It's saying you're not, um, blah, 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 not proficient in survival, though. Which is fine. It's it's an interesting build. Um, your favorite enemies are humanoids. I will fucking allow that. <laughs> um, it's like I said last week. There are some things that don't count as humanoid. Don't do count as humanoid. It's weird. It's fucky. Mm -hmm. If if I would count it as a humanoid when I'm fighting you guys. You guys can count it as a humanoid, vice versa. So, um, I, I counted him as a humanoid, so you guys can also count him as a humanoid. Um, so, survival checks will be advantage, and intelligence checks to recall information about them will also be at advantage. Mm -hmm. And you would get plus two on both of those um, because of Bifon's help. Thumbs okay. up. <laughs> Hey, Camellia. What? Good luck. It gives you finger guns and cast guidance, and you get a plus D4. Aww. Okay. Thanks. Advantage plus D4 plus two. <laughs> I will write that down. <laughs> Advantage plus one D4 plus two. You're saying that like we're not going along with them, Luto. Oh, I thought we are going to go look for the thing right now. Yeah, we're all going, aren't we? Yeah, but she's the one who's going to be... Oh, yes. I see, yes. No, it sounded like it was like, okay, good luck, bye. Sorry. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. We all go together. That's right. Uh, let me see the feather real quick. I'll roll there survival. You go. He puts the inky black feather into your palm. It's little mm. feathery bristles brushing your skin. Sorry, I've been watching too much Baldur's Gate stuff. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that was a that was a whammy filled roll. That was a, that was a whammy donut. Ooh, that's, that's way the advantage, right? So you get a roll again? 
No, nope, the six is at advantage. advantage. Oh, right, no advantage. It was, it was a nat one or a six. Ooh, so 11? <sighs> yeah. Mm. Well, he went up and out, so that's a good start. I mean, <laughs> he flew out of here. Looks up and pointedly does so, so Ludo also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ludo, yeah. There's a whole ceiling oh my god he's not in here anymore dang you're pretty good <laughs> i mean he also got hurt too so i mean how far could he be from here it depends when he flew away if it was last night after we left then He's had almost an entire day. Wait, so we're trying to find Kentergo in Kentergo County. The man, you right? You brought this paper. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I happen to know somebody who is all about seeing things and finding things. Oh, that is not where I thought you were going to go. Hmm. Oh, gods. Oh, I'm just um, saying, we don't have to, but, you know, if our tracker isn't tracking, I, I mean, then... Maybe I ask him for a favor. They're, they're the all-seeing. You know what? While we're all here, and we're in a safe place, and we can all keep a very close eye on you, it's something we have to deal with, so we may as well use whatever advantages we have. That's my vote, anyway. Y'all ever watch The Bear? <sighs> watch, mm -hmm. like, the first few episodes. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Um, don't tempt fate. I think it is, I think that would be a bad idea, and very impossible. Within the past month, we've had a fireball thrown at us. A big, giant fireball. Yeah, sure. All right. Go ahead, Ludo. Be careful. Let her rip. Okay. Oh, don't uh. say that. He, that means something else to him. Not until the hard way. That's, uh, <laughs> that's for later. Okay, uh, let's see. <laughs> he closes his eyes and does wiggly fingers and says, Okay. Esimik. Uh, Esimik? Here you go. Hey, yeah, there's my buddy. Hey, look, we're looking for somebody, and I figure you can, you're can you seeing everyone because you have so many eyeballs everywhere. Uh, maybe you can help us find him? Come here, child. Uh, his... Kind of long arms reach down and extend out to you. Oh, thank you. I give him a big old hug. <laughs> it's nice. Oh, feather's soft, huh? Ah, it's not that bad. He, they, they crouch down to your level, and look into my eye. Mm-hmm. Focus. I stare hard into that eyeball. Hey, could you tell us a little bit about your cool? Uh, ability that we gave you warlock for yes that one invocation indeed <laughs> uh ludona has the ability called gaze of two minds you touch a willing humanoid and perceive through its senses until the end of your next turn as long as the creature is on the same plane of existence as you uh and then you are blinded and deafened to your own surroundings <laughs> 
So hey, Dime, that's sight just, checking. Just count. <laughs> Does touching the feather count as touching a willing humanoid? Roll a d100 for me, please. Oh. Ah. <laughs> you thought it was going to be conventional, did you? <laughs> oh. Three. Zero three. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, does willing include in that equation? Because it doesn't mm. seem very willing if you just find a piece of the humanoid. Yeah, it's but you know, what, what's willing slightly, to a god, right? It's a slightly <laughs> bastardized version of gazing eye. What with oh, it being the all-seeing. Okay. Well, you don't explode. <laughs> That's good. Um, uh -huh. uh, sorry, what? You, <laughs> what? You didn't explode, it's fine. You feel a slight tingling in the spots just behind your ears. At first you feel it could Ooh. be the feathers of SMO. Mm, just trying to think, you. trying to think the last time Umberlai made me feel this good, just something. <laughs> there are feathers at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> As you close your eyes and embrace the gaze of Esme. I'm embracing the gaze, all right. <laughs> Thank you, because I really wanted to make that joke. <laughs> um... <laughs> Esmek in the gaze, yeah. As you embrace the gaze of Esmek, you feel the slowest, longest blink that you could do. But rather than your vision going, going dark, it goes light. And as you focus further and further in on the eye, this vision overwhelms you. As you become the clouds, and looking down, you see Shenhua, the water reflecting the afternoon sun. The new channel in the lake where the temple now lays. The opera house where you all stand. Towards the edge of town, your gaze moves back towards the south, towards a large watch post, looking out over the mountains below, back towards Ninut and the other mountainous areas of Lorraine. Oh, he's like crossing countries. Cities? Mostly still in the city, still okay. in the city. But you can see from miles in the air. And a slight raindrop falls from the cloud. And you fall with it as it becomes your vision. And as it falls, the, the environment around you blurs with the motion. And you blink feeling the wetness in your eye. And you are standing now at that watch post. The sun behind you setting. Or just beginning to set. The wind whipping at your shoulders and your hair. Your hair. Your long shoulder length hair. Do I have any control? Or is it entirely just looking? Do you try and do something? Yeah. Um, you're able to move your head and look around. Excellent. Can I move my hand? Roll an arcana check for me, please. Or a religion check. Religion check. Okay. Oh, spirit and faith, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that was a 17 and it rolled to a 7. You feel kind of the arms slowly try to become your own, but it doesn't 
quite... It doesn't quite make that connection. But as you look down at the hand, you see a kind of forest green skin and a fairly frail, narrow hand that is certainly not yours. Was it Kentigan Astor's? You don't think so? Huh. Kentigan Astor isn't green. Okay. As you stand kind of taking in this new perspective, looking out over the mountains below, you see something just ahead of you and the watchtower begin to drift down and float and your hand out of your control is put up to catch it and you see a black dark feather and as you look to the south just for a moment, you could feel like you see a distant, small outline of something larger than a bird. And suddenly, in reverse, back into the clouds, and you open your eyes and you're greeted with the wide, slightly bulging red eye of Esamic. And this incredibly wide, jaw-to-jaw -jaw smile. Which fades as you come back to your senses in your own body. Huh. Oh. How long was I gone? Uh, just... DM, DM to you, um, you're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> roll... That's what I wanted the hand for. <laughs> roll, <laughs> roll a perception check at disadvantage. For disadvantage. Me. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> if you roll bad, you will Aha! take psychic damage. It is a 15 with disadvantage. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I roll well when it counts. <laughs> You were <laughs> half elf. Uh huh. With blonde hair, a fairly mm -hmm. narrow frame on the older side. About, if we're talking, you know, dimensions. Uh huh. Four and a half. Woo! All right. That's it. We're good. Luna comes back all smiles. All right. We Not good? even say anything else to Esmeric. Oh, you just go back to Esmeric. <laughs> I hope you were able to see what you were looking for. Oh, my bad. I thought I was in the room with everybody. Okay, now I'm with Esmeric. Oh, Esmeric. Esmeric wants a goodbye, please. Oh, okay. So oh. Oh, thank you, Esmeric. That was very nice. You know, everybody's so scared of you, but you're a pretty nice guy, huh? They don't share your faith. Yeah. I don't know. I, you're pretty nice to me. I'm pretty nice to you. I guess I owe you a favor now, huh? As your faith grows stronger, so will your powers. As your powers grow stronger, so too shall your goal become closer. Let not your faith falter. Hey, yes, Amik. They raise their heads slightly. We're friends or partners, or am I more like an employee? Hmm. 
As the mix stands back to full height, the eye closing and the wings spreading out. I shall see you soon. Hey. And the white around them fades, and you are. You're back in the room. Hmm. You're no longer a chicken. <laughs> when I say the word fries, you will jump from the nearest bridge. No. <laughs> I love how no one in chat was on to you. <laughs> with, with oh, don't worry. I'm about to reveal everything. Okay, I hit it well. But you're, yeah. <laughs> yep, Luto opens his eyes back up and you will see him. Oh, how uh, long was I gone? Three minutes. Neat. Well, uh, I got to see he, f flow he flew out of town to the west. He's in like a watchtower, maybe like a lighthouse kind of. And uh, there's a giant bird with black feathers. And his skin is green now. I don't know why his skin is green. <laughs> what? Yeah. I got to see him. He flew out of here, very mad. And then I'll just, uh, I'll recount everything I saw. Okay. And then at the very end, I'll be, uh, and uh, I also learned some things about him. Certain uh, measurements. About Kentagonastic. Valentine's Day. I got it. I don't think we gotta worry about little Kentagonaster too much, eh? <laughs> okay. Luto, what did you find out? I found out he is a very... His ambition is very small. You know, we're here to save the world. The Breakfast Club is very big, standing on top of everything, and then we help <laughs> everyone, and... His uh, direction is very small-minded. Huh? So Kentaganaste was green. Yes. And his dick has shrunk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I can't fucking stay in character. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, to keep, like, yes to me. I'm, trying, I'm trying to keep a straight face this whole time. And just, that just got me. Uh, Luto, darling, I don't think that was Kentagonist here. The, the bird? That sounds relevant. We have the feather. But Kentagonist is not green, and his he is more, unfortunately, well endowed than that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say. Hmm. I will reiterate, though, you are better. In many ways. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go find him and kill him. So. And you sulking now because he's got a big. I'm not. I am not doing that. But when we find him, I will measure it. I'm sure he'd just tell you if you asked. You well, know. I can't trust his lies. At this point, Danny's already walked out the door. <laughs> <laughs> if one takes two steps. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoever this feather belongs to, I saw him. He went to the west. He's over there. And if we want to catch whoever this feather belongs to, that's where they are. Jay-Z, I have a very important question. Mm -hmm. Um... Is it you that's forgetting the direction that he went, or is it Luto that's He's... canonically forgetting the direction that he went? Oh, because uh, I thought you said, like, the sun was setting behind him. So I was like, okay, the sun sets in the west, so he's towards the west. I got you. Yeah, that, that, that was my description fault, so my apologies. Uh, he is, in fact, to, he has gone south. Southwest. But Birdman gone south. South by yes. southwest. Hell. 
Well, yeah, yeah, Southwestish. I'll, yeah. I'll describe. Uh, I'll describe everything I saw to as much detail as I can recall. Okay, so the person you were visioning things as was a, a green half elf with a four and a half inch dick. Mm hmm. And they saw Kent Ganaster flying to the southwest. No, I was the thing that flew out of here and went to the southwest. So maybe okay. Kent Ganaster turned into that or something. Okay. Either way, southwest. Like out of town? Yeah. Way out of town, right? Out of town? I don't know who you're asking. I'm at, this is JC asking Key. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're asking asking the DM in character. <laughs> <laughs> just to hear like a I glass mean, knocking. Just It's a little bizarre. Hey, you're DM. asking me to verify the... <laughs> Let's me to verify the details Luto you gave me. I just like how Ludo over here is just casually breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> That's just, um... Say, hey, DM, let me out. <laughs> Don't Ludo, why are you trying to the wall? <laughs> Stop. She just turns and faces like a spot in the wall and starts talking to the camera. A, a hole in the wall. <laughs> what are you winking at? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, <laughs> with that, um, you all head out of the, uh, the opera house, um, no more, uh, enemies in sight. Uh, you do see Angus w walking about, just having a wander around, free huh. from the carriage. Did we free him from the carriage? He is free from the carriage, either which way. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's much carriage. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. I thought, yeah, for some reason, I guess I thought when we left, we took the carriage and Angus with us. It it was, I believe, dubious. But hmm. either, either way, Angus is here now. Being I'm going to awesome. uh, <laughs> look across the road and see uh, a wandering Cosmo. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna pick him up and I'm gonna put him over my shoulder. I'm gonna put him on the back of Angus. Oh my God. I'm gonna look at Angus and say, Angus, home. Okay, I will need you to make two checks for this. <laughs> sure. Need, I will need you to make a contested strength check with a um, probably not very high number to beat uh, to, to grapple Cosmo. So athletics. Then, uh, yes, please. Oh. And then uh, animal handling check for Angus. Sure thing. Nine on the strength. How strong is Cosmo? Uh, Not strong seven enough. Seven on animal handling. Oh no. <laughs> Can I help? Can I assist on <laughs> animal handling? Sure. Yeah, roll at, ad roll at advantage. Or Camellia can roll. Yeah, there you go. I roll. Seventeen. Nice. Um where does Angus live? <laughs> no, Angus would know what you mean with the seventeen. Um and begins to poddle back to the brothel with just a very confused Cosmo on top. Um Bifon gives a very thankful like, elbow check to Camellia. Uh, uh, what, what's happening right now? Why, why, why am I on a horse? And where are we going? Cosmo, shut up. I'll no, no, talk no. to management when I get back, okay? I don't, uh, what, what do you mean? Shut up. No, I won't. Bifon slaps taking... Angus on the ass. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> and uh sprints back to the brothel is that where you are all heading mm -hmm. okay i believe so yeah yeah, yeah cool. danny's still wanting that nap <laughs> danny's still wanting that nap 
Um, as you arrive back, um, you see uh, an another new face on reception. Um, kind of like a... Is there a job for Cosmo? <laughs> don't, fuck, don't fit him in somewhere. There's so many desk shifts. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, are they all doing <laughs> rotations? Oh. Um, <laughs> you see this, like, um, slightly, uh, like, cowgirl outfit looking half orc, like a very masculine half orc, Ooh. but in this very cowgirl, um, like he looks like he's going to a Shania Twain concert. Yeehaw. Um, at the reception. And, uh, and he's like, Hey, well, oh, you guys, welcome back. Oh, brought some fresh meat, eh? Uh, uh, oh, you weren't kidding about the brothel. No. Hmm. Uh, am I paying? Or... Right. Okay. Cosmo. 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 Mm. It's yeah. very likely the Opera House isn't going to keep you. You're a really good host. Uh, you've helped us out a lot. With what you weren't to know. Um, so this is the least that we can do. Really, really good here. They're very nice. I mean, a lot of people work at the desk, but you seem like you might be interested in other work anyway. I can go speak to Numi, see what we can do about getting you a job. I mean, Terilia, see what we can do about getting you a job. Might even be able to speak to the headmistress, see what's up. Oh, well, um... Are you going to continue to fight me on me trying to help no, you? No, I'm just, it, it's, <laughs> in, like, I'm not against sex, sexy work. I, just <laughs> contemplating that route f f for me. Oh, you'd fit in here a treat, sweetie. Don't even worry about it. Yes, um, quite so. It's your choice. I'll see if I can put in a good word. Uh, thank you. That that would be appreciated. Yes, I could start with just tidying, running the desk. Yes. Can somebody get um, this guy a drink, please. <laughs> Tarquin, you have met. Um and do know that you have met the mistress of the establishment. Um, Danny, I forget right. if you knew that they're the mistress of the establishment or not. I don't remember that ever coming up. Yeah, I think mm. it was more just like, she's your long lost brother, so. Yeah, yeah, that's about <laughs> all I ever got. Am I still under that, by the way? Or is she nope. still, are we nope. still, okay. That cupcake ran out and it is, Worth mentioning, it, it, it is uh, going to... The, the cupcakes are expiring at the end of this day. I've sold. Yeah, we've still got Most a couple left. We still, still have one. A couple left. Hopefully Kent still thinks he's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's Did got I... many more reasons than a curse to believe that. Did I feel like I was a piece of shit when I was within... His persona. <laughs> <laughs> um, roll an insight check for me, please. Oh shit! Did we just fucking just very subtly. Sherlock Holmes this shit? <laughs> best part of D and D. The best part of D and D is accidentally ruining the campaign. Sixteen. <laughs> you weren't in Kenta Canastia's body at any point. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> But he should feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> that is something you do know. <laughs> uh, last time you saw him, he looked like he felt like a piece of shit. But that might also have been because he was covered in purple paint and shoved in a, in a trunk in his own dressing room. 
after having been thwarped by your party. Hey, he's always doubling down on his confidence, so we have to double down on making him feel like shit. Exactly. But yes. Well, uh, I guess I'll um, just go and get comfy and wait to see if anyone speaks to me. And he goes and kind of sits down at the in the lounge area, uh, where he sees, <laughs> slightly surprised by a giant frog, uh, seagull, <laughs> and uh, no small orphan boy. Mm -hmm. He's fine. <laughs> is that is, is that everything we've adopted in this journey so far? <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah. Wait, what does that say down it? PNG tuber indie dad? Yeah, now it checks out. <laughs> it's fine. You gotta brew some recklessness into that boy. <laughs> yeah, he's not here. It's fine. Tree's gone. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. So, what are we doing? Short I am... Well, hey, hey. Oh. I'm going to go see Terilia, Taleta, and Numi. I'm going to share uh, the goods that I got, give each one of them a little piece of the jewelry that we found, oh. and ask Terilia about getting Cosmo a job. Okay. And then I'm going to take a nap. Uh, you find them all ambling about in various areas and kind of bring them all together. Um, how much worth of gold do you hand out to them in jewelry? I'm going to give each one of them a piece, so I'll take two gold out of the five that you said all the stuff was worth. Yeah. Um, they all take a piece of costume jewelry that uh, fits them fits them and suits them best. Yeah, exactly. Uh, neat. This looks good on me. It does. Yeah, I think it, I think it does too. <laughs> uh... Thank you, Bifon. I really appreciate that. And Terilio, Not a problem. they'll go away and kind of look in the mirror and adjust their necklaces and jewelry and stuff. And Terilio puts her on, hers on. It feels like you'll be uh, leaving soon. Yes, unfortunately. But I wanted to thank you all for an amazing time. And, um, yeah, you, um, have my info. <laughs> hmm. We can send you a message if, uh, yes. we know where to look. What's the IG? <laughs> <laughs> uh, country spelt without an O, uh, cat girl, XOXO. <laughs> Um, Spelled without the O. <laughs> <laughs> Beef on the stair, and it's stair, S T A R E. Yes. Well, it's been a pleasure. I hope uh, Certainly is. we see you around again here soon. Oh, you said something about that. Uh, Confused looking tiefling in uh, the lounge. Yeah. He's actually a really, really good host, but uh, I have a feeling he might be interested in other work as well. Hmm. Okay. I'll uh, go and get uh, the mistress, see what she has to say. It is her decision, after all. But thank Just you. Just give him a chance. I appreciate it. Will do. I can be very persuasive. I know. Mm-hmm. And I know you can be, too. And with that, you see her once again. Climb the stairs. Go along the rooms. Room 67. Room 68. And she gives a little knock on room 69. And then leaves. And after a few moments, uh, you see 
big ha Titanic lady <laughs> uh, come out. Uh, still in the similar, very similar outfit, just slightly different pastel colors. And she makes her way down the stairs uh, and heads over to <laughs> to Cosmo. Now I hear you're here for an interview. Uh, looks like he's about to shit himself. Um, <laughs> Cosmo. Uh, uh, uh yeah, yes. Uh, I, I um, kind of looks back to find you guys. Uh, the, this group uh, recommended I come here uh, and. and uh, <coughs> Pardon me. Bless you, Arrive Cosmo. here. Thank you. Uh, try, try and be a, a host of some sorts or other here. Okay, we'll uh, see how well you could do. Pick a card, and she holds out her cards, and they do a little reading. Uh, what would anyone else like to do in the meantime? If anything, you're all gonna chill out here, go and get some food, go and travel back to Ninut now. Danny is taking a nap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think naps um, are in order. Yeah, he almost died for the second time in a row, so I think sleeping or taking a nap <laughs> is a great idea. Short rest. <laughs> uh. I mean, since Tarilli really already did what she did, I'm out. Just a hand pokes out of Bifon's door and motions her to come over. <laughs> <laughs> I will also be having the a rest. Shortest rest. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Umbral, I will say before everyone goes into their rest resty rooms. Shall we uh, meet back up after naps and see about heading back to? Ninut. We should be there by dark. Get a big rest so we're not in going those after Kent? beds. Well, he's not here anymore. Okay, we'll check him. I'm one. Mm. He was flying all over the damn place, huh? Ninut's to the south, so we can always investigate a bit more there. We have Camellia and the Feather. Should we want to just check if he's in the area? We don't need it to Okay, so we'll head back. I was just confirming. Over your mission. Yeah, head back after uh, after a little nap. Yeah, next yeah. Next time we can uh, pick up a typist, I guess. Um, perhaps after that, uh, we'll get another assistant or something. We're going to go to bed. That's no, you're time. not. Are you gonna go to bed, Luto? I'm not going to bed unless you want to sleep. I'm still fairly awake. I'm kind of mad at you, still, actually. Hmm. I hear inspiration. Hmm. I'm the one who grants inspiration around here. Prove it. <laughs> I will do. And uh, she, <laughs> you both head into your room, and she will cast Bardic Inspiration on you. Hooray. I um, use it on an athletic, athletics check. <laughs> <laughs> Strength, specifically! <laughs> Mama. All right. <laughs> well. <laughs> After the nap, <laughs> it is uh, beginning to get a little bit later uh, in the evening, kind of six o'clock-ish. Oh, 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 so nice. So have I. Um, and uh, you'll kind of get your stuff ready and packed up and um <laughs> Umbrella makes and goes and makes sure uh Barbanus has been filled into the plan and uh 
he's still at the airship port, which he is, thankfully. And would anyone like to do anything else before leaving? Say goodbye uh, to all my friends. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, we should probably look for three, right? Mm-hmm. Umberlai would come back from the skyport and say, uh, Barbinus took him already. Okay. okay. Literally teaching him the ropes. Could have told us, but, you know, <laughs> didn't. So, three is safe. Three's fine. Yes, this time. Anything else other than saying goodbye to your friends? Um, that'll be all. Well, the lion know. guy's already gonna wait for us at the ship, or we have to go get him? He's at the ship, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, we just gotta, I guess we're just checking out. Alright. You, uh, say goodbye to all of your various, um, flings slash friends. At uh, not actually friends, friends is coming. Um, but you, all your friends and acquaintances at the uh, at the brothel. Osmo, that is such a weird sentence out of context. We're saying goodbye to all of our friends except for friends. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> oh, actually, I would like to swing by the market real quick if it's on the way, maybe. Yeah, sure. I just want to stock up on some pantry basics. So I'm like, whatever, a Jinwa, unique spices and herbs and fruits and meats they might have around here. Okay, how much would you like to spend? I'd like to load up. So let's spend uh, 37 gold. 47 gold? Okay, you get... Mm, you get various fruits and veggies and meat and spices and such. Uh, the fresh goods without fridge will last three days. Barely. <laughs> Third day is sad, but still edible. Um, but with the fridge, they'll last uh, a week. Perfect. I'm and just I'll gonna be nice and say Genoa that starts goodies. from the beginning of the next day. Yeah. Um, and that's enough for, yeah, that would be enough for five people for, or six people for, um, a good amount of time. And... I'm going to entrust mm -hmm. Angus to Cosmo. I have a feeling that the two of them are going to get along. Bye, <laughs> Angus. <laughs> nice. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> been practicing. <laughs> um, Cosmo will say, oh, a job at a brothel and a horse. What a usual set of gifts. Um, thank you so much. Moving and, up in the world. Uh, right. And Luto, thank you again for the Cosmo crisps. They were <laughs> oddly chewy. Um, I felt a little sad eating them, uh, but they were really nice. Yeah, no problem. Ludo says as he's eating whatever he's eating because I'm also eating. Sorry. <laughs> That's all good. And Ludo hands like, him a like uh, a small index card that he's written the recipe on. Says, look at oh this. He presses it into his palm says, look at this later. Does it just dead ass say possum on it? <laughs> well, I mean, and also how to prepare it and make it taste good, but yeah. It's just got smash a possum into the ground with a giant hammer cook season <laughs> and arrive exactly <laughs> perfect um why can't I check it now uh, I'll, I'll trust I mean you, you can but you're just gonna get mad <laughs> why would I oh Jesus you know he just he, he puts it in the trash I think if if I eat it again, I'll eat it next. You make it for me, let's say. Okay, that sounds good. And all say your goodbyes. Um, Tarquin, as you get ready to leave, Mistress Nermal 
comes over and kind of bows her head to you. How have your rests been? Well, uh, since we last talked, I was able to rest. So uh, that was a very welcome change for me. Good. Now, if you ever need anything, send me a message. And she'll place a small coin into your hand. And how exactly does this work? It is a coin of fortune. If you're feeling like your luck is particularly low in life or any other context, you can rub the face and it will send a message to me. Or you can flip it. And it might give you just the thing you need to remind you of who you are. When I am out of words, this is so generous of you. Thank you. If I can ever repay your kindness, please let me know how. She smiles sadly and puts a hand on your arm. Come back when you remember me. We will meet again, I promise. And she nods and begins to walk away. What a lovely lady. I like her. <laughs> you may roll an insight if you like on that right. last comment. That's uh, 15. Uh, 15. Um, it's not so much uh, you know what she means by it. It's more a, uh, wait, what the fuck does she mean by when you remember me? Right. She clearly knows something more, but is letting your path take its course. Nice. Alright, I got it. Wonderful. Okay. This ends everything! I'm good, I believe. Yeah, you are. Oh, All right. Thank you. Yeah, great. So, with that, you uh, head, watch as uh, Luda goes shopping. You're all given some fruit and veg and meat and stuff to hold on to <laughs> as you uh, approach the wonderful Featherboon airship. I remembered the name. Holy shit! And nice. uh, <laughs> even from a distance, you begin to hear. So then you pull the rope, yeah? Yeah. Like this? No, the other way! Jesus, this is crazy! I don't even know who that is! And you made me reference, <laughs> my goodness. I almost got us all killed, I feel. I just, this guy's name came into my mind, so, so. Oh, hi, guys! That was way longer than two days, but I guess you're uh, finally ready to leave, huh? Yeah, there's a lion man here. Yeah, he's uh, he's napping. Yeah, bring us home, I guess. Okay, have you got everything? Who's that? <laughs> Points at Danny. <laughs> oh, hi, Danny the Dapper Dwarf. Pleased to meet you. And he like extends his hand to shake. Uh, Danny, you see this giant ass mouse folk? Uh, not giant, but. You know, uh, human height mouse folk um, mm -hmm. with a little tuft of tuft of hair and red bandana. He's very loud. Um, ah, you are adorable, eh? Huh? Oh, thank you. I like stroke my beard. Your beard is so green, huh? 
Those, uh, the drapes match the carpet? <laughs> Danny ignores the question and walks away. <laughs> All right, there's good to meet you that. I like this guy's energy. This guy seems wild. He seems like he parties. Okay, is everyone ready? Make sure you strap in. Got, it's only like half a day journey, you know, but uh, we here is going to be great, yeah? If uh, we crash, stop it happening. Okay. Say goodbye to Jinwa, maybe forever. It is got the fucked up way of existing. Three, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Just like hanging onto this rope that he's trying to pull down. <laughs> He'll like stand there while he's like waving in the air like a like a kite, just letting him yeah. dangle. Just you you like it here, or you wanna what? You like you like wanna stay here? No, it's, it's good. It's good. I like it. The mouse guy's funny. <laughs> okay, good job. Thanks. <laughs> He'll like tug his ankle and help him back down to the ground. <laughs> Huh. That keeps happening. Hey! That's okay. Because oh, you're so okay. skinny, you eat more, you become heavier. More muscle, right? Healthy boy. I mean, it would, it would be cool to get really swole. Here, you start. I give him like five cookies. <gasps> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just devours them. Alright, yeah, so we have nighttime driving. So don't have any rave parties back there, alright? It will attract the, 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 uh, the wyverns and stuff. They love raves. Okay? Everyone behave. And help out. Or not. Okay. The, the ship's, like, already taken off at this point. <laughs> like, it's just... The dock's just getting further and further away. Oh, shit, we're going! Bye, everybody! Um, and for the last time, you see as uh, Demblin, the little axolotl uh, priest guy, <laughs> to Vieral, just kind of looks up to the sky. <sighs> Peace at last. Bye-bye! <laughs> well, see you soon. You've been a great audience. <laughs> and with that, the flight behoo the flight behave the flight back to Ninut begins, as does our ten to fifteen minute break. Hey! Oh. Thank you so much, everybody. We will be back in about ten to fifteen minutes. Bye bye. Thank you for tuning in so far. See you soon. Work the middle. Work the middle. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, hi. <laughs> Val is ready. Is he? I have no idea. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. We had a very fruitful discussion while we were gone. Mm -hmm. And that very, was... Very ripe discussion, you could say. You know, we were Y'all, discussing... rules are so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, we were having... We were joining in the Discord discussion. If you're not in the Discord, let us know. We'll put, put the address there for you. Um... Uh, we were having a very important discussion of if the group is me, 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 or shoo, shoo. Um, and it was pretty mixed. Yeah. Pretty mixed messages. Um, I forgot how we got onto the dick stuff. <laughs> yeah. It feels like it just like always it. naturally goes there. <laughs> 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 Happy Valentine's Day to that. Is oh, right. I remember. I remember. <laughs> It was Ludo's sleep, sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. And it was breathing in, never breathing oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We, just, we... Constantly, just constantly going in without ever coming out. Happy Valentine's and then the Day. And dick jokes happen. Mm -hmm. It's like, exhale! <laughs> Please! <laughs> um, we all know someone who snores like that and never fails to give a heart attack. <laughs> Ah, but welcome back! I hope you guys all got some some lovely foods, lovely snacks, lovely drinks, lovely times. And if not, that's okay. Wow, it's Scorpio okay. with the accuracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's <laughs> not. Ludo is all of my uncles, like combined. He's like the yeah. the proto uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Proto uncle banging banging bards and doing <laughs> deals with angels. Yeah, next time I see him, I'm gonna tell him about their adventures. Yeah. They're gonna be so happy. Oh my god. Is she a blonde bro? She's a blonde? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not the wow. <laughs> oh my god. Incredible. So we need to change playlists to flying. Ooh, I need to change the map. Let's do that. Yeah. As, um, does anything particularly happen for you guys whilst on the airship? Half day long airship back to no 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 Danny is just uh, re relishing the uh, um, sensation of flying. Like he's yeah. just kind of like, like you know, taking in the sight of being so high up in the air. Being a short fellow, it's 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 a it's, it's a novel experience. You go to the front and like a Titanic. I was about yeah, to say. Yeah. Yes, there we go. Uh, it's your first, first time. Uh, roll a Constitution saving throw for me, please. Oh, sh <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. Uh, you said constitution? Yes, please. All right, my constitution. It's an 18, <laughs> boss. Pardon me. Jesus Christ. I keep getting the hiccups. Hiccups? No! Not now! <laughs> no! My hiccups hurt so bad, but they sound so silly. <laughs> Don't be in pain, but thank you for the laughs. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. Uh, it is... It is bravely default Epic Gaming Gems. Okay, but... Camellia is gonna. I mean, Rubes ah! is gonna be. Rubes will be DMing while Key drinks water. Go ahead, Rubes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't so, vomit. So, Rubes, I rolled a. I rolled a. Uh, what, what did I roll again? I rolled an 18 for my Constitution. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Thank you. I got sturdy legs. <laughs> This map went to you. I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> it didn't even cure that. Uh, DM Rubes, I, ro I rolled a... You don't completely throw up on your shoes. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Yeah. DM Rubes, I rolled a 10 for get money. 
Oh, uh, okay. You steal money from one of your party members. That's not Camellia. Not Camellia. Oh, not Camellia. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god. DM Rubes, uh, how I do I steal this I swear to god, if it's, if, if, it, if it's from me, we're rolling initiatives. <laughs> <laughs> because this ship is supposed to be mine, so... How do I claim? Oh yeah, it is. Oh, nice. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> It, canonically, that's not this one. Canonically. No. <laughs> hey, Rubes DM now. No, I'm some rules. I'm just waiting for you to actually try to change the overlay. <laughs> okay, I'm adding ship to my inventory. <laughs> that also means you have to take care of three, though. Uh, that's okay. It's worth the ship. Oh, Add child oh. to your inventory. Child. Mm -hmm. That's not really bad. No, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. Uh oh. Do that. <laughs> no! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no! DM now. <laughs> I will not be silent. <laughs> sorry, who's, who, who's that other person talking? The, you know. Oh, it's just Frank making a bunch of different noises now. You go over here. I'm just trying to speak over the DM. You're the game log now. That's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the tone veil, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggly woogly, I'm a condo for that booty. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, great. where'd everybody go? So is that high or low, uh, we're heroes now? <laughs> <laughs> Am I okay? Am I safe? Uh, I don't know. My hiccups really hurt. Oh, I'm sorry. It's so, no, it's okay. They sound funny. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The problem like is, I, I never get them less, like, if I have them once, I will have them within the next 24 hours, at least once guaranteed. My record is 13 times in 24 hours. It was miserable. Oh, God. Chocola Goblin. Booyah. You joined in at a perfect time. Everything's fine. My head is not too far down. <laughs> Don't, don't. Who did that? Who did that? Who did Who that? that? Who did that? <laughs> Val, uh, you fall overboard. No, uh, you're fine. <laughs> I um, fall you overboard and take 30 no. psychic damage, right? <laughs> no, you you are fine. Uh, Camellia, seeing as you're the DM, I would like <laughs> you to roll for me. A D100, uh -oh. please. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna be free. Oh, don't worry. The consequences will affect everybody. On the oh, team. Nice. oh, good. <laughs> it's what we deserve. <laughs> Tarquin might be over-encumbered. <laughs> there's, there's a whole damn ship in his inventory. <laughs> I got a 15. Okay. High or low? Oh god. Jesus, I feel like the teacher just came back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just smiling. <laughs> uh, low. Are you sure? You don't sound sure. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, Look what you've done, I... Rubes. <laughs> Everybody throw in the middle. No, it's still so good. We're I hope the side. jokes were worth it. <laughs> Trying to yeah, use her speech. Anyway, look. Oh shit! Well, I didn't even roll, and the boss music came on, so I get no. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I did want to see if anyone would notice. And, and, and suddenly, fifteen mind flayers pop out of the. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For business. Okay. <laughs> You're safe. For now. Dang it. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, as you <laughs> zoom away from Jinwa, uh, the ship going at a steady pace, um, a fairly smooth journey. Is there anything y'all would like to do whilst aboard, other than give uh, give uh, Barbanus his ship back? 
Although, you'd never canonically took his ship, unfortunately. But we can enjoy that moment. Just mentally move on. So, in an alternative timeline. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Val, roll high or low, actually? Um, low? Are you sure? No. Do you want to stick with low or go high? Uh, I'll stick with low. Are you sure? Yeah. Mind games. Okay. <clears throat> this is like the teacher coming back and then... Like, giving us a pop quiz for being bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say, Rubes, you succeeded on your roll. Um, nothing comes and attacks the ship. There are no issues as you're flying. <laughs> um, you were incredibly fortunate. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to hold my hands up. I'm not going to make shit happen just for the sake of it. I'd get you to roll for shit happening on the ship regardless. But... Y'all did remind me of a good point. Oh? So Val, I rolled high. Uh-huh. As you are... Is it too late to change my vote? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As you soar and begin to see the small snowy town of Ninut to the southwest, of the Genoa viaducts kind of coming up on uh, midnight or so now. You do see or sense some of you pot potentially a, a disturbance in the force. Um, just a, a, a slight anomaly as you're flying. You may all roll perception or arcana checks for me, please. Mm. All right. I don't sense shit. You do sense shit. You just Ooh. do not know what to make of it. And what's you get, Ludo? 20. What kind of 20? Da -da -da -da. Yeah, you believe me. Uh, da -da -da -da. <laughs> don't be scared, you guys. Don't be scared. Hey, you're all on edge. 18, nice. Because the, because the teacher's back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Am I really that bad? And it's Jane Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, line up, get your dice, make sure they're polished. <laughs> so, Ludo and Tarquin, you feel a very familiar feeling. Rather than the feeling of the feeling in the moment, something slightly newer, a precursor, the calm before the storm, not the weather, not, you know, anything you're used to. But something gets you to look over the right side of the ship, towards the mountains. And you see, as you're going along, just for the last 60 feet or so, at the back of the ship, Less so, the veil that you have seen before. And more so again, like the tearing of cloth from the other side. Some invisible blade, sharp as diamond, as smooth as cotton just slicing through the air. The veil behind you proactively being torn as you're flying. Oh. 
Shit. That's like bigger than any veil tear we've seen so far, right? Yes. And it's getting worse by the second, right? It slowly kind of comes to a stop as you notice it. Uh, and as you notice it, you see kind of the top half of the veil take on that more veil-like quality mm-hmm. to it. Nah, you both rolled your perception checks. I'm going to stick with them. <clears throat> you get a peek beyond the veil. You see pitch black. Perceived pitch black. That in that darkness you see thousands upon thousands of small, colorful lights like stars as if another sky lays beyond that veil an unfamiliar sky and as soon as you just see the veil lift enough to hint at it it once again comes back and covers the tear up. The tear is still there, but it is a more concealed, veiled tear, rather than when you were watching it be actively torn, which was a much more obvious visual sensation. is what you see. <clears throat> Darkwin, are you seeing that? Yeah. Um, my brain is still not able to process what is going on. Should it's we... It's different than the ones we saw before, but uh, what are we going to do about this? I mean... We're in a giant ship in the sky. Can't we go towards? Yes, but uh, shouldn't. I don't think that's the destination we're supposed to go. But isn't that what we're doing? We're supposed to close these these stairs. You guys see this? And then he'll point it out to the rest of the crew or the rest of the group. Um, you didn't oh, see it. As, yeah, you didn't see it as it was happening. But now that it's happened, you all see just the regular tear in the veil. You don't see the kind of skies behind it. But you oh. do see the tear in the veil. And it is larger than any you've seen before. Would this actually be my first time seeing a tear? Uh, no, it looks weirdly like the portal you came in through. Yeah, the that's what I was time. thinking. Until the corporation started eating you in and out. By a different magic. I mean, we're supposed to close those, right? Isn't that the job? I I don't even know how to close it, come to think of it. Yes, how do we do that? Let's say we go towards the tear that right there. How do we close it? I... I don't know. I, they didn't mention a way to close them, just about the altars and other things. Maybe we just go and tell them about it. Maybe they got some kind of special magic that closed the portal. Have any of you got a map or something to mark it down on? Probably, yeah. I mean, I don't have one, but we can probably... Marbon has probably got some. Oh, hey, what you talking about me, bro? Just trying to drive the ship. Barbarus, we need a map. Eh? Map, please. A mat? Map. M. M. Uh. <laughs> looks to Camellia. Map. M A P. M A P. M A P. Map. 
mark something. Why didn't you say so? Uh, yeah, sure, there's one, uh... There's one, uh... Below deck. Map. I'll... I'll go grab it. Thank you. Uh, you indeed find the map. Um... Take a quill as well and some ink. Roll a survival check for me, because y'all gotta figure out where you are on the map. I got a plus six to survival. How's y'all survivals? Are we all rolling individual? It's up to you guys. We don't all want to start drawing circles on it to be like, this is where we are. Maybe somebody really ass assist me so I get help, <laughs> and I'll cast guidance on myself too. Assist me! <laughs> survival? Yeah. Yes, survival. I got... Plus six on survival, so I guess. Oh, okay, let's so say we both got plus six. Nice. Uh, so, how about I assist you, and I'll cast Guidance on you. Uh, so, roll with advantage plus d4. Nice. Nice. Okay, first one is 18. Nice. That's pretty good. No, you roll. can do better. I believe in you. No, I'm gonna stick with it. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> First one was great, though. <laughs> um, and yeah. two, so it's a total of 20. Dirty nice. 20! Dirty 20! Dirty 20! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get everybody in on the dirty 20. So um, <laughs> um, So... <laughs> Always reminds me of Emma Stone in Easy A. I don't know why specifically that just started. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you easily find yourselves on the map, kind of quite close to Ninut, but uh, you see a notable mountain peak. Um, Ludo's helping, so he notices that it looks kind of like a dick, and nice. you can uh, point that out on the map. <laughs> and teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork and phallic <laughs> mountains make the dream work, uh, <laughs> as my mother used to say. <laughs> so, yeah, you mark it on the map, and uh, within the next half hour or so, you are docking at Ninut. Back in the snowy land, you see these... <laughs> I love saying fat, like, snowflakes, because it seems like... It feels like such, like, a... Um, like an opposite thing, but you do get fat old snowflakes and they're just real big. I feel like if a fat snowflake fell on your cheek, it would go like, fat. You're like, <laughs> you hear like an audio plap sound. Yeah. <laughs> just very f fluffy, fluffy fat snowflakes, uh, very gently falling uh, in the nighttime as you all land in Ninut, safe and Mac home. Yay. Well, not home, but Apologies, yeah. DM. Um, have we taken any sort of rests for oh, yes. long? Um, you can absolutely have a short... You've taken one short rest um, before going on the airship. Um, you can take another short one on the airship and then go to bed now that it's, like, nighttime. Or you can okay. get... You can squeeze in a long rest on the ship as well, should you wish. In case, uh, in case anybody's using a hit dice to heal during the short rest, Ludo's gonna cook up a quick snack on the ship so you can use an additional D8 to heal mm. even further. Wait, is that how it works? No. How does it work? <laughs> Special <laughs> food. At the end of a short rest, yeah, you gain an additional D8. He makes nice. uh, some kind of warming chowder. Warming chowder. Yeah, you will kind of read on your warmer clothes as you get back into the super cold territory. Um, and you will arrive, and uh, as the airship is kind of lowering to the ground, Kind of opposite the guild halls where you all took off. Um, Danny, you see this very, very sweet, homely, 
humble looking well you've been you've been to Nunu briefly. Um I I forget. So you would you would know it, but yes, very uh homely, cottagey, log cabiny uh town up on the mountain tops, um, complete with a large guild hall and taverns and lots of hot cocoa and very snowy <laughs> and magical and adorable. Um, not very good for merchanting, but very sweet nonetheless. Oh, so I would not have spent a lot of time here then. <laughs> no, you were like, I need to get out of here and go somewhere with merchants. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, the the, the, the the hot cocoa sounds tempting. It's very good. <laughs> it's very good. Um, and as the uh, ship lowers to the ground, um, those of you with perceptive eyes and dark vision see a tiny figure running through the thick snow, <laughs> kind of the knee-height snow, um, as you pull down to land. You guys are back! Oh my gosh! And Hello. barely hear her over <laughs> the engines of the... <laughs> and, but Piffy is there in her big, big, big coat, waving. And, uh, goes in and brings out some torches <laughs> so y'all can see. And, uh, you land and get all your stuff sorted and everything. <sighs> Hi, guys! How are you doing? Who's that? You're small. No, not in a bad way. I'm just new new friend. Looks to you, Danny. Yeah. You see this, uh... Yeah. Slight, slightly smaller than you, uh, goblin gal with a really mm -hmm. comedically large, big uh, coat on that looks like it was her older brother's or something. Far too big for her. Mm. Danny the Dapper Dwarf, nice to meet you. And I just walk past her. Oh, uh, I'm Piffy. It's nice to meet you. Um. You keep bringing more and more people back, huh? And then, of course, Bardemore's Proud Reach just does a big cat stretch on the deck. And goes, <laughs> mm. Oh, that was a cork in Oh, hello, you're tiny. You're huge. <laughs> We're gonna be best friends. <gasps> Wait, are you Bardemore's? Yeah. I bet you're piffy, eh? I've heard about you, I've had stories. You have? Yeah. I think you're the one who contacted me to say a group of adventurers was gonna come and pick me up and stuff. Yeah, that, that was me, wasn't it? Can I, like, have a piggyback at some point? Oh, it was a guarantee to happen. Okay, cool. Um, we have a temporary bed set up for you. In, in the guild hall for now. Um, the rest of you, your beds back at Willow's uh, are still available. Um, we can probably figure something out for uh, Dapper the Danny Dwarf. Uh, whatever his <laughs> name was. But how are you all doing? I've missed you so much! Ah! And she'll just go in and hug all your legs. <laughs> Hugs! I'm gonna give Hugs. a high five. <laughs> <laughs> she has to jump a little bit. <laughs> Heck yeah. We should probably be quiet because it's really late at night, but, uh... Hey! <laughs> you guys... Uh... <laughs> you guys, uh, unpacked all right and everything? Yeah, yeah we're good. good. Yeah, we're... yeah, what he said. We're good, thank you. Oh, all right, wait. I'm gonna go... What? Wait, real quick. I need to do something. Uh, where's three? I'm here! Oh, here. Uh, she'll run up and produce a dagger and hand it to three. <gasps> a knife! No! <laughs> <laughs> what have you got? <laughs> I, I had to, and that's where the campaign ends. It was all leading up to that moment. Um... <laughs> Don't use this for crimes. You call me a knife? Yeah, um, you're gonna be kind of on your own now. I mean, you have 
Captain Barbinus and the crew, but... Yeah, it's not exactly alone, huh? He's saying it like we're gonna teach him somewhere. It's still good to look after yourself, too, so... Use this wisely. Don't do too many crimes with it, okay? And no talking to mind flayers. He nods. Okay, take care, and I'll ruffle his hair. You... You too, dear lady. I will. Shifty eyes. <laughs> Looks at the knife. Hey, you use that on me, you are dead. You understand, huh? Use it on the ropes. We need it on ropes. All right, we will uh, go to a tavern or something and refuel ship and stuff. And more. You don't care. All right, bye. And <laughs> just goes back on the ship as they uh, sort themselves out. <sighs> Goodbye, <Really>? three. <laughs> He's, yeah, he just walks off the, the plank over the edge. <laughs> um, <laughs> you'll see him again. So, do you all head down to Willow's house? Yeah, sure. Yeah. For the yeah. night, night. Sweet. His idea we'll stay um, there for the night, and then tomorrow we'll head up to head the guild headquarters. Oh my god, that's exactly the plan. Okay, I like it. So, um, wait, wait. How did you know that? It's like it don't even mind. Um <laughs> is, is Willow's like an inn or Um oh Pithy will give you the life story of Willow um on the way down to Willow's house as you go kind of back down the hill. Oh, okay. okay. So um Danny, you're new here. Um Willow is super nice. She's uh the nicest halfling lady ever. Um, her husband is a half-orc, and they have, like, 38 children. Um, and they're all super nice, and they've, um, let you guys use their beds, so you can sleep there and be cozy, and, um, um, yeah. It's gonna be really good times. Oh. No, they are they nice beds. Yeah. Excellent. Um, do you, do you know about the fail? Have you guys told him about the fail and, and the stuff? No. I... The, the what now? Oh, the portal thing that we came no. through. No. He doesn't need to know. Maybe ask the mistresses before we tell him? Maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're, they're still pretty busy. Like, stuff's calmed down a little bit, but... Like, we had the memorial service the other day, and it was... You know, it was pretty rough. So... It's up to you, though. And, uh, <laughs> goes and jollily knocks on Willow's door. Yeah, Willow comes down in her pajamas, and kind of, just opens the door with one one eye just ha only half just half open. Oh, of course. Why would you come at a normal hour of the day? Hi, Willow. I'm really sorry. They only just got back. Could they get to go and sleep in their beds? This is Danny the D the Dapper Dwarf. It's, dapper it's dapper dwarf. nice to meet you. Uh, Willow, I'm really tired and we'll probably be friendlier in the morning. Uh, yeah, head up. Um, there should be, uh, there should be a sofa bed if you're okay with that for tonight, Danny. It'll be fine, thank you. Okay. You'll fit on it fine. I'm not saying that because you're short, but the kids fit on it, so. Alright. Come on, <laughs> just kind of holds the door open for you all. Up. Uh,. How many characters have made a reference to my height this session? <laughs> <laughs> not no enough. Many, not many <laughs> dwarves around these parts. Um, because it's Sorry, all above you mountains. Shorty? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're lucky that Danny's not short-tempered. Yeah, oh my god. Hey. It's got a pretty short fuse, you're right. Um. Small. That's low of you. Man, small. Look, it's a really tall order <laughs> not to make jokes about his height. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna cast command on every single one of you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking try it, bitch. Um, <laughs> no, it's valid. Um, so yes. You need a stepladder for me to hear it. Oh, oh have you have now. one! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him so short. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> So well, at least at least now we have the count up to respectable levels, unlike hey. you know my height. Hey. <laughs> hey. Um. So you all enter, and uh, as uh, Willow makes her way back up the stairs to her room, uh, she just goes, "Oh, uh, we managed to blag one of those fancy hot cocoa machines off of the uh, some of the students from the from the guild halls. So uh, it's in the kitchen if you want to help yourself." But if, it, if it's empty, you have to refill it, okay? That's the proviso. You get hot cocoa as long as you refill the machine. Okay. I'm going to bed. Good Thank night. you. Good night, Willow. Night night. Good night. Thank she you, Willow. Heads up the stairs and <laughs> goes back to bed. Danny immediately goes to get some hot cocoa. Hell yeah. You pour yourself a nice, milky, creamy... Hot cocoa. Not too hot. Not too cold. Not too creamy. Not too thin. Just perfect hot cocoa. Optional marshmallows. Real chef's kiss, huh? Mm hmm. Ninu is known for two things guild hall and hot chocolate. <laughs> Anybody else getting a hot chocolate? I was yeah. just going to ask Danny if that's just for him. <laughs> <laughs> I just want just one cup. There are plenty of cups around. Ludo will like shake his head as he like pours cups for everybody. <laughs> and just starts <laughs> passing them out. Thank you, darling. I, I was just motioning. Thank, thank you, Ludo. <laughs> Look, da Danny was so socially oblivious, he still doesn't understand what, what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> He's got he's got the lack of social knowledge of uh, of a fay a fay person, but uh, he there does we not go. Have, that's, he the, does, that's the perfect excuse, right? He there. does not have the nepotism <laughs> etiquette of Camellia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you all get your hot cocos, um, Ludo, as you go to pour the last one out. Uh -huh. You see the machine kind of sputters its last as. Uh, you, you fill the cup. The machine is empty. Oh, oh. Look, guys, big threat. I know. But... Gotta get some more. Gotta get some more cocos. I look in the pantry yep. see if there's more <laughs> cocoa mix. Danny like inspects the machine as he's drinking his cocoa. How do we refill this? Um, Keeping in see... mind that he can only see it from like a lower angle, so <laughs> yeah, he can't really. Yeah, <laughs> Danny can't. Danny can't see shit. It, it is probably purposefully not accessible for small children to get their hands on because it's basically just this massive <sighs> copper chamber with small a tap children. at the bottom. <laughs> and smaller folk. It, look. look, I'm not short. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just height challenge. We okay? know, we know, we know a couple of the students at the at the guild halls. And they are Wendell and Carson. Carson, fuck. Car Carbon Babels. So we know, we know we know the quality of some of the students we're talking about who make this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but um, yes, you find um some pure cocoa mix and you find some milk. All right. Yeah, be filled so that you know there's a fresh batch when somebody's coming for more. Ludo, I would like you to roll for me an investigation check, please. Uh oh. This is this is a this is a Ludo roll. This is a very important Ludo character moment roll. Investigation is not Ludo's bag. It's an it check. That's nine. It takes you longer than you'd like to admit, as in everyone's pretty much made their way to their rooms by the time you see the two very clearly labeled cylinders that say milk and cocoa powder on each of them. Um, but once you find those, it's pretty easy breezy. <laughs> Do that thing where I stare at it for too long and I just breathe yeah. heavy through my nose. <laughs> like you fill the water part with water and then you're like, okay, what next? 
sample to put the water in and then you like take some of the water out and then you put some of the water back in and like nothing happens this is, this is like one of the most relatable moments in this entire campaign yeah. <laughs> this is why i was like nobody help <laughs> Luder needs it uh. but yes yeah, so you get your hot chocolates all made and unless there is anything else you will get a long rest! Hey. Who needs level ups when you have long rest hype? I would like level Wait. ups. No. <laughs> Just <laughs> if, we're, if we're, the question is on the table. Oh, there nice. He, uh... he, he hands out her level ups very, very sparingly. <laughs> well, I want to just give them out, but then it's like, you got, I gotta try and play the game as well, you know? Nah. Oh, no, don't play this song because I'm crying. No, I'm gonna play it though, it's good. <laughs> you won't wake up. And... Oh, yeah, Tarquin! Roll yes. a. You thought you were safe? Wisdom safe for me at advantage, <laughs> please. Oh my god. Oh, thought, thought you were safe <laughs> from the short rests, and then, and then the big rest happened. Oh my god. <gasps> Four and five, so it's seven and eight. Oh. Oh, you're dead. Let me find a different song. <laughs> it's not a normal it's not... day if I don't get close to dying, so. It's true. Damn, the hot chocolate didn't help. Welcome to the life chocolate of Chocolate before bed. Chocolate before bed. <laughs> oh god, it's not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Just, 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 yeah. Like but, that. That's scary. Yeah, it's not that, don't worry. <laughs> I thought it was a different one. Ah, it's not the one I wanted. Is this? Sure. It's, it's a little. A little obvious. Ooh, I like it. It's good, right? Tarquin, after many, well, one whole very long night of restful, peaceful, nightmareless sleep, you find yourself once again in this dark void, rather than a mirror in front of you. Looking below, you see this very shallow water kind of mirrors everything above it, including yourself. Gently appearing in the water are the three cards that Neramar holds for you, which were the grave, the jeweling harps, and I'll give an inspiration point to anyone who can remember the third one. <laughs> I remember the numbers, it was, I think it was 1, 11, and 22. Yeah, that was... They're, they're in a different order now. They have since been shuffled. Um... Oh, no! Uh, I thought I took a picture of it. I might have done. But you see the cards that you saw. <laughs> I remember the... Pulled. <laughs> I remember the reading. That's the important part. Yes. Uh, and as you look into those cards, you feel the familiar feelings of when they were initially drawn. And you didn't really know how to respond, other than knowing that they foresaw some form of truth. How did Tarquin feel about getting his cards read? 
Well, uh, it's kind of um, it's it's a little re uh, relieving because he he never really shared in detail about all that's happening to him. He barely mentioned that he had a nightmare or two, but uh, it's kind of it's, it gives him a little bit of hope to know that he can actually get someone to understand what's going on someone who is uh, maybe I don't know special in reading and knowing of the arcane secrets that might be involved in all of that mm. so he's very happy to have met that lady the lost song is the third card I remember. oh there we go <laughs> it's like quick um, <laughs> as you ponder this and look into the cards, just beyond them in the reflection, you see with her eyes closed, looking at the cards, Lady Neremore. Just very gently smiling. She takes the form of the lost song the form in the lost song card you remember Tizu the kind of monkey folk person you knew from back at the monastery you see their name Here on the gravestone. Roll an insight check for me, please. Oh, As no. you look at the jeweling harps. I get a 20. <gasps> Dirty 20. That's good. Da -da -da -da. I, I think this is the first time you've <laughs> had a had a nightmare and immediately seen something and immediately rolled good for it. Like it's usually yeah. taken some building up. Instant gratification. Let's go. In the third image, playing one of the harps, you see a small tabaxi, a small cat folk, kind of. L almost leopardy patterns, a tabby wearing a small hood. And with a 20 insight, I'm not gonna ask you for a history check. This was another of your friends from the monastery. Mai. I remember Mai, yes. The cards shuffle. Lady Neramal and the Lost Song being to the left. Being in the center, sorry. <laughs> Tizu and the grave being to the left side. And Mai and the Jeweling Harps to the right hand side. As you look up from these cards and the reflection of your confusion, potential tentativity, for just a moment in the far distance, at the horizon of this mirrored lake, you see a figure shrouded in black with pure silver hair bright eyes a strong muscular frame and as they take a step you wake and find yourselves in the morning after a long rest 
oh uh, awaking in Willow's house. Yay! Yay! <laughs> long rest! A totally normal sleep and long rest. Woo! We love to see you. <laughs> I need to Ooh. find where these people are. <laughs> It's just Tarquin just like, fuck. <laughs> so many people. <laughs> so, as you wake up in the morning, potentially feeling or not feeling like um, P. Didicus, one of the most famous bards of his time, <laughs> uh, you all head down. Um, for the first time, Danny, you see the absolute mayhem that is the breakfast table in uh, Willow's household. Just like eight kids just all fighting for bits of toast and some scrambled eggies and uh, sausages and bacon and breakfast foods. Uh, I'm gonna try to resist um, a joke there. Um, you know, I've already assaulted one child. You don't oh need to God. put fighting children in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but oh. unless anyone would like to do anything, you all head down for breakfast and eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And head up to the guild halls. Unless anyone would like to do anything? <laughs> no, I think we're good. At least uh, Ludo's good. Yeah. 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 Um, this oh. isn't really going to change anything, but, but I'm curious about something. Are yeah. any of these children taller than I am? Mm. Yes. Okay. So, as Pithy mentioned yesterday, <laughs> although you are somewhat expecting smaller children, even those who are maybe five or so at oldest, um, tower above you. And when you see their father, it suddenly makes sense as to yeah. why. For although Willow is a halfling, a half orc, Six foot something tall husband. Oh, these must have, these must have been painful births. Just she's a hardy lass. Is all yeah. I find the size <laughs> difference kink is very popular in my community. I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. this universe. It's it's very yeah. Wow. My 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 peoples my peoples they like it. <laughs> listen. Scorpio's like listen. <laughs> <laughs> my next question, my, my 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 next question then is like, what were, what are the chances of Danny being bullied in this house? Since even the youngest children tower over over me. Um, they're all fairly nice to you. They're all like, oh, new guy. One of them comes up to you and is like, I like your beard. Oh, thank you. Why is it green? It's it's my color. Can I wear your hat? That would probably be a bad idea. Please, can I wear your hat? God. Danny sits down to eat and then leaves. Um, <laughs> you all see as Danny is surrounded by um, just the two youngest kids just asking many questions while he's trying to eat his breakfast. <laughs> what kind of shoes are those? You like purple, huh? Oh, yes, it's the best color. No, it's not. Uh, what do you <laughs> think the best color is? Magenta. You idiot, magenta is purple. Nuh uh! <laughs> <laughs> See, I wasn't gonna say anything, because I don't wanna <laughs> get into an another argument with kids. <laughs> The main difference between the other kid and these is that these have parents. Oh shit! Can't hit these three ones. Three just outside. Three just outside the window, watching you think that. Oh, just, just a big old frown <laughs> face. All around me, or from me. <laughs> oh god! This just got real sad real quick. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's I got. Go. Barbanus is his dad now. Amelia, what the dickens? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Dickens dick out. Hey, oh, I'm about that big. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. 
So, we're all heading up to the fucking... The fucking guild hall. Okay, we're all heading yes, up to please. the guild hall. Of course! So polite. Um... Everybody except Danny make a perception check of disadvantage. At disadvantage. At disadvantage. Do I get to make it with advantage then, since I'm no. being left out? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's uh, nothing personal. It's just, it's just business. Danny understands. You would approve, but it's not personal. Yeah, but I had a nat twenty. Oh. I always no. forget what that is. <laughs> oh, what disadvantage? Twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Got a the 16. lower. Oh, twice take the lower. Ah, uh, yes. yeah. Uh, I should have known. Oh, we're rolling That's with disadvantage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. That's so a five. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm oh, shit. I'm trying for your wasted 20. 15. Beef, what you get? 20. It might be a little bit dirty. Meow. <laughs> Beef on, Ludo. Yeah. With it being morning time, a lot of the students for the guild halls are making their way to school. Oh! <laughs> and you just so... Dang it, would you not just believe that you just so happened to see one Barson Bobbles making his way to school? I cast with Mage his Hand. Gaggle of friends. <laughs> Is that the first brother or a second brother? <laughs> That's the younger brother that you wanted to push down the stairs. Ah. Uh. There's the older brother with the girlfriend who doesn't like him. Um. Mm -hmm. The Camellia Beta archery. And well, because the thing is, is, like, <laughs> that kid ain't shit. So, yeah. if Ludo wants to torment him further, his, sure, but I'm good. <laughs> his arm is no longer in a cast, though. I will say that much. So we can. But if again. I see the other brother. <laughs> oh, Wendell. I wouldn't mind hurting him. <laughs> With a dirty twenty, you'd see. You'd see Wendell. I'd see Wendell too. Oh, With a dirty no. 20, yeah. Is this about to, is this about this to turn DM. violent? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this DM trying to make us hurt children. <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> I'm not trying to make you hurt children. I'm merely pointing out that you see familiar faces in crowds and crowds of students. What you do or do not do with that information is up to you. I mean, the, hey. the real joy was in making Luca do it. So maybe, maybe the new joy is making Camellia do it? But Camellia's not really innocent either. Who's an innocent person? Where's three? I mean, <laughs> I mean three was the one who led us to the Mind Flayer. Yeah, three was yeah, ready true. to have that true. thing eat your brains. Do we know anybody innocent anymore? Is anyone truly innocent? <laughs> I, I can't think of a single person. Pithy. <laughs> well, Pithy's the one that will not put the hit out on them, but <laughs> she's the one that was like, he was True. a dick to me. <laughs> what are you Cause... talking about? Pithy didn't do anything. Pithy did nothing. <laughs> Pithy did nothing wrong. She could never. She could never. Um, but you keep Good walking. Trip. She called me short once, though. Or small. She called me small once. She said you're also small. <gasps> Oh. oh, I misheard her then. Now I feel bad. Also small. Pithy oh, would never me. Oh. Oh. What, the, what, what is happening? Hmm? So you said I saw Wendell, right? Yes. I'm going to put on my robe of many things, and I'm going to go over and say hi to Wendell. <laughs> okay, you see him in his usual spot, kind of by the lamppost, by the guild hall. Uh, his little gaggle sees you coming and they're like, Yeah, we'll catch you later, Wendell. And he's like, Yeah, whatever. I can't remember if they're British or American, so they're gonna be in between. Can I help you? 
Do you, do you yeah, need a new I... cloak? Yours has got some holes in it. It's okay. They'll mend eventually. Um, I just wanted to thank you so much for your uh, assistance uh, last week. Um, worked out just fine. Matter of fact, uh, I even ran into somebody. Oh. And from Sounds behind the cloak, I start rubbing the coin to summon Citra. Oh my fucking god. Um, okay. <laughs> she just... And Citra just appears like... What the... Oh. Uh, uh. Uh, kind of looks between you, Bifon and Wendell. Hi. Um. It's your girlfriend. It's uh, your girlfriend, Wendell. Hey. Uh -huh. Hi. Hey. Um, she helped us out. Yeah. Yes. This uh, this your man, right? This is your man, your your man boy that goes to school here. Yeah. But... I thought you were gonna summon for me like a, like a fight or. What? What is the oh, wait, meaning? Wait, this is not a fight. Of... Is it, this is not a fight? Do you want it to be a fight? Roll for initiative. <laughs> I want you to do what comes natural, Citra. When you see this lovely face right here, and he just grabs his chin and just squeezes. Well, uh, I want him to, she, she kind of like leans over and whispers in your ear, I want to take all his fucking money, but I, I need to like, I'm in it for the long haul for that, you know? But, uh, we could, we could play along. Okay, pretend, pretend you're kidnapping me. Just, just do it, just do it. <clears throat> No, I just, I, I didn't realize you had like a whole thing going on here. Uh, oh my god. Mm? What are you doing here? I, she kind of looks either side of her. I thought, I told you to stay away forever. But, um, but, but I must be here. In things. N no. She kind of half pushes you away and then kind of uh, like like a wrestler in like a really bad wrestling match just like nods at you to be like do, do, do. then I'm gonna push her back ah oh next you're gonna be kidnapping me oh do you have discovered my plans then oh <laughs> Damn it. Well, I won't let you foil me, and I just throw over my shoulder and uh, ah! slowly jog away. <laughs> um, you're both gonna make uh, performance ch checks. <laughs> I don't know. Sure I, I, was, I, was I was pretty convinced by that uh -huh. performance. <laughs> Okay, that's a six. Fucking that eight. God figures. Yeah, Solid. Let's see what, Solid eight. Let's, let's see what Wendell's really inside wants to know what is like. It's a really <laughs> high eight, though. Like of all the eights, like that's a pretty high eight. <laughs> it was like a number to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wendell just like slowly yeah. follows as like. Way higher than four. Are you? Are you? Are you pretending to kidnap her right now? Pretend? What do you mean? Who this pretends is to kidnap someone? Real. Yeah. That'd be super fucked up. It's just this awkward silence. Oh my and god, it's his brother, Clarkson. I, I think he's here to stop me. And I start charging towards him. Oh my god, <laughs> you start charging towards Clarkson with, with fucking <laughs> Citra in hand. My shoulder, yes. Um, well, he's busy talking to Ludo right now, was he? No. I don't know. Is Ludo not talking to him? No. <laughs> no fun if Ludo pushes him down the stairs. Ludo would always push him okay. down the stairs. Um. Oh, shit. 
Um, he, he, <laughs> Car Carson just sees you coming and just kind of steps out the way. It's like, <laughs> what's going on here? It's so bizarre. It gets on her doing that, you know. And Citrus just like, I, I don't think this is working. Um, put me down real I quick. I don't think it is either, yeah, put me, sure. Put me, down real, put me down real quick and uh, distract him. I'll, I'll go faster. And she, sure. like, tiptoe sneaks behind a tree. <laughs> and Wendell comes over to you. <laughs> and uh, he, he's just like, what in the devil was all of that even about? Oh my god, it may, uh, incredible. <laughs> Sorry. What what was what was that all about? So like, I was just chilling. I'm gonna reach uh onto my rope of many things and I'm gonna pull off the last patch. <gasps> uh which is a toy piano. Which I'm gonna take out and did it did it did it did I'm just gonna run away. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um and boy howdy does it work. Um he like he he was almost it looked like for a second he was half expecting a musical number and he was here for it. Um thought you were going to tell your ballad via the medium of song. Um and you distracted him so much that he was fully blindsided by um <laughs> by Citra just absolute nut shotting him from behind with a <laughs> solid leg and uh just stealing his bag and running away. And he was just like, Oh, who did that? Damn it. Oh and just kind of flops over in the snow. <laughs> oh my god. I have no idea. Oh quick uh, somebody help! You, Clarkson. Huh? Then I'm going to pick up his brother, Wendell. And I'm gonna throw him at Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Make, make an make a make an attack roll. An attack roll? Yep. Throw throw knight and. Okay. What is? What if I got to roll that? Um, so just what you would do for any regular attack roll. Oh, God. So d20 plus whatever it is. You can uh. minimize the damage if you want to. And do minimal damage. <laughs> Does a 13 throw? 13 hits, yeah. <laughs> um... I'll Oh, well, I'll throw for uh, unarmed because it's the same roll. So, oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. That's three. always three. Three. <laughs> Valid. Um, you see <laughs> in glorious slow motion is just not shot. <laughs> Wendell just flies through the air kind of towards close and at the top of this hill. Because as you all know, walking from the guild hall back to the... back to uh, Willow's it's a big ass fucking hill. Not pleasant in snow and ice. And uh, they, as they make contact, just <laughs> you see just Wendell land just right on the diaphragm of Clarson, who just kind of ooh, and just full pingu face newt. And then they both just slide fall down the stairs. All the way down the hill. There's no stairs. Oh, that's fine. It's the same. Yeah, they slide, but they do slide, like, all the way down the hill, kind of curling style, and land back in the village center a good hundred or so feet away. Uh, watching that, Camellia pulls out <laughs> her horn of silent alar alarm and gives two blows. <laughs> one for each brother. <laughs> I thought for Camellia those... was good. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, are we the good guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, for those audience members not familiar with the the horn of silent alarm, as they are sliding uh, to a um, non-lethal demise, um, <laughs> both both brothers hear a ah! 
very suddenly <laughs> in their ears, in their head, that no one else can hear. And it scares them quite a bit. But I heard this magic moment, I thought Rube was going to say, like, I pulled out my cell phone camera and took a picture <laughs> and said, that's bad. I would learn to move. <laughs> Not the Yakuza. I, lo I low-key thought she was going to pull out a mop and, like, start curling. Like, <laughs> just <laughs> making the ice nice and slippy. Uh, but all of that happens, and because you guys did such a phenomenal job, Pithy absolutely sees that. Um... And, and is very shocked, but also there's a little, there's a little smug smile there. She's like, she, she's like, she's like that gif where it's like girl crying and then she kind of looks at the camera and does a little peace sign and sticks her tongue out. <laughs> <laughs> As Pithy in that moment just, oh my god, they're so injured. <coughs> nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yes, otherwise, uh, you all head <laughs> towards <laughs> The guild halls with uh, no specific other run ins of Danny. Note. Danny oh, no. jogs up. Uh oh. By beat beef on. So, what was that all about? I take um, it you don't like the, the those folk. No, I have nothing against them. <laughs> <laughs> that stops Danny in his tracks, and he has a very confused look. Um, so if you had said that, uh, you had a problem with them or anything like that, Danny was about to turn around and add more insult to injury. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Danny, I just like to see people happy. <laughs> uh, huh. Pithy, Pithy runs out, high fives beef on, and then runs back in. <laughs> Danny is even more confused. <laughs> Citra better give me an extra charge on that fucking coin for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I wonder what she was doing at that moment. Um, but yes, you all head into the guild halls. Very familiar to all but Danny. Danny, you see that the guild halls kind of have this initial open area for any bounty hunters there's a big old bounty board and a reception area and then the rest of the building is split off into three separate departments uh one is for the arcane one is for hunting and the other is for smithing which are the three separate departments of this guild hall and the specialisms and seemingly where the group is going to go i so, I make a detour to the bounty board. Yep. There's a lot of a lot of claimed bounties. There aren't really that many that are uh, that are left, unfortunately. No, n nothing unclaimed that might be worth my time. You do see one pin that has not got a little quest note on it, but it is placed as if it did. Which is curious, but ultimately unhelpful. I shrug and follow the rest of the group. You know, okay. it's funny that Wendell brought up my shabby robe because now it is genuinely just a shabby robe. That was my last poll. <laughs> oh no! Aww. So it's just a regular robe now. It's used well. You, just, you keeping the toy piano? Or are you putting? I am totally keeping the toy piano. I'm adding <laughs> all the things that I still have off of that. Just I think I still really have the door, backpack, the, doggy the door, piano, yeah. and the uh, stair, uh, the step ladder. Yes, <laughs> the stairs. Um, yes. <laughs> As you all enter, uh, you see Icta in Bolt. Um, cute picture! Um, Danny, you will see what she, she looks like via the stream, hopefully. Uh, I need to get me a little one of them stream dingle boppers. Um, still handy. And uh, she greets you all. <sighs> Welcome back! Uh, I don't believe we've met. Look 
next to Danny. It's nice to meet you. And he extends his hand to shake. She extends hers. Ikta Imbalt, mistress of the hunting guild. Here at Ninu. Danny the Dapper Dwarf, wanderer. Wonderful. You're pretty far from home, aren't you, Danny? Yeah, I get around. Hmm. Well, uh, have you guys told him anything, or...? Uh, Umberlai just kind of shakes her head. Figured we'd leave that to y'all. Oh, one other note. Uh, Friends does have a shoebox that he sleeps in. Yes. <laughs> if anybody ever wants to use that shoebox for anything on the fly. Sorry, cut. <laughs> Friends can't use it while he's flying. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, right. Uh, yeah, I will go and uh, speak to uh, Mistress Atirin about that. Uh, this is gonna kind of suck for you, Danny. So uh, I apologize um, if, if there's uh, uh, if you could improve one area of your skill set, what, what would it be in? How do you mean? Just basically asking you which stat. Oh, oh. I don't know how to in-game. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which virtue? <laughs> I guess... I guess I would, you know, imagine proper in-game flavor text for this. Dexterity? Mm -hmm. More dexterous. <laughs> yeah. Works, yeah, I mean, I, mean, <clears throat> I mean, yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, I will see what I can do, but all of you might want to go and uh, check out Helmslow at the smithing department. Because I believe you all, you all left some orders last time you were here? That's what I was thinking about. I want my yeah. gloves. The whole time? The whole time. Well, we made sure to do our best in the time we were given. So It was like gloves, 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 gloves. <laughs> That that makes that makes sense, and uh, Master Hounslow is pretty much one of the best in his field. So uh, enjoy, and we will meet up with you after you've collected all your stuff. Uh, we'll be in uh, Mistress Atirin's room. I'm sure you all all showed Danny where that is. It's good to see Thank you. you. And Luca is. Yes. Oh. Alive? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's it's good. She's doing fine. That's good to hear. Figured I'd uh, I'd check. <laughs> but that's good. We'll be I sure had to a feeling. Her in the future. What's up? Yeah, she seemed like she wasn't gonna be coming back, but it. Wasn't it was kind of tentative between why she would not be coming back, but regardless. Oh, speaking of coming back, yes. Uh, meet us, meet us in Mistress Atarian's office, and uh, we'll see you there shortly. And kind of okay. walks away, kind of pushes pushes two kids away from fighting each other in the corridor while she's at it. <laughs> what did you say, Luda? <laughs> oh, I said loot. I'm excited for the loot. No. Well, do you all make your way to Smithing Guild? Master Han Solo, where are you? <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> You're going last. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you all make your way to the, the, the Smithing Guild, which begins with an H, apparently. And, uh... You see, it is kind of this uh, circular room with a massive joint forge in the center and just l surrounded by loads of anvils with various students working. Um, and the towering half giant figure of um, the kind of gray skinned, very white haired, uh, just bodily, just pear shaped 
uh, Hounslow Crowla with his um, large draping shoulders and huge apron uh, makes his introductions to Danny the Dapperdorf as well. Hounslow Crowla, master of the howdy, 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 howdy. Howdy, 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 howdy. <laughs> oh, howdy, 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 howdy. I like that. That's a good, good introduction. Danny the Dapperdorf, at your service. A pleasure. I'm sorry I don't have a uh, gift for you, my friend, but um, hopefully you will take some enjoyment in seeing your friend's gifts. <laughs> ah, no, not for you, friend. <laughs> Although, I have got some marshmallows for you. <gasps> nice. <laughs> so, uh, who wants to go first? No, not you, Song. This is not... This is not you. <laughs> no. This is not your time. No. Oh, not this either. This one? This one. Mm-hmm. Yeah! Alright. Sounds love's fucking part in the guilt. Um, so, who wants to go first? I'm gonna take a step back because y'all was really excited for your stuff. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I take it the silver haired one is most excited. All right. So he uh, goes into a, a chest and he pulls out a beautiful pair of fingerless gloves, kind of a rich brown leather. Um, and they do indeed have small silver crowns decorating the cuffs. Just what he wanted. And you can go into your inventory and add fingerless gloves of the monk to it. I humbled all this shit. So it's probably broken, but we tried. <laughs> Let the record show your honor. All right, I'm gonna add them right next to the ship. But I will, I will give you all ASMR descriptions of what your things do. The fingerless gloves of the monk, wondrous item. Fingerless gloves adorned with small silver crowns on the cuffs. This item catalyzes your pre-existing monk abilities. When a ranged weapon attack hits you while you're wearing them, you can use your reaction to reduce the damage by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier, Ooh. provided that you have a free hand. If you reduce the damage to single digits, you can catch the missile if it is small enough for you to hold in that hand. You can then roll a ranged attack using that item with a 30 to 80 foot range without having to spend a key point. So it's like my deflect missiles skill. But better. But a little bit better, a little bit boosted. Because it doesn't right. take an action or a key point to immediately yeet it. So you kind of catch it and in one fell swoop yeet it again. Nice. All right. Don't gotta spend I try my best, you guys! I try my best! Oh, Who's next? Yay! Hopefully you can find them, otherwise I'll add them to your adventures. <laughs> 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 Always next! Camellia? Breathe, so it's... no. okay. <laughs> oh, uh, Me, please. Okay. Uh, he... Rolls up to the chest and pulls out this gorgeous, just leaf designed, um, like cut out in leaf shape, uh, various shades of leather in greens and auburns and browns and all the colors of autumn leaves. Um, and it is leather armor. Um, this armor has been made in a much more homely manner than its usual form. The leather has been you. Yeah. The leather has been. <laughs> oh yeah. Tell me more. 
The leather okay. has been worked using resources from the Feylands, giving it a slightly incandescent sheen in the sunlight. Each panel stitched together out of many leaf-cut shapes of varying leather, resembling a spring-like forest floor of leaves and petals. While wearing this armor, you feel the sun's light shine brighter, energizing you, and you gain a bonus of one to your AC. Ooh. This is made from tough but flexible leather, Oh, that's a bit I forgot to delete from the thing I bastardized to make it. <laughs> but yeah! So I would like you to add Feylands studded, two different words, Feylands. Um, it is only one, but I forgot. Uh, Feylands studded leather, and you should be able to add that to your inventory and your carpet. Mm -hmm. Who's next? I feel like Santa. I feel like it's me. Get him, Beef Hong. Okay, Beef Hong. Beef, beef, beef Hong, back in the trunk he goes, and he pulls out kind of a, um, a very much like elevated, slightly more elegant, but still rustic version of your current armor. Rather than its ordinary form of mismatched pelts and hides, this armor shows the refinery of your regular studded leather armor. It strongly and neatly forms together the pelts used in its creation, while still paying homage to the furs and patterns of the hides themselves. This is woven together with the finest tauldron threads in deep purples and greens, a true union between na nature and nurture. What is it called? Refined hide armor. Ooh. It is refined. You know, it's, it's got some pelts and stuff, but they're like nice pelts. They've got different patterns. So you can have like a little bit of leopardy pelt, a little bit of hair pelt. Like it's all just very... Yeah, it's... it's prim, very... but homemade. So, so, so that sounds very pelty. Mm, yes, it's like leather and pelts <laughs> and foys. I guess that leaves one more or two more. He oh. slides that shit on like Brandon Lee from The Crow. <laughs> yes! Fuck yes. Worthy, worthy successor. Uh, it's not working, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> That's fine. I'll I see the yours. bonus on it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> So, Humberlay, my dear, after you. Oh, I think we'll save hers for last. I've done something really, uh, to, to your demands for, for your lovely lady. <laughs> uh, he brings out next, um, what effectively looks like, um, kind of some almost samurai leather armor. Ooh. Um, but in the center, instead of like a regular boring armored metal plate or um, something more traditional or decorated. Um, you know what? I'll read the description. This armor is made... Oh no, I got it wrong. It's, it's not. It's... Um, Beef Onza looks more like samurai with the bits of pelt and stuff coming on it. This armor is made of narrow strips of metal riveted to a backing of leather that is worn over cloth padding. Flexible chainmail protects the joints. No, it doesn't. That's a lie. Because um, <laughs> I had to make it so that you could wear it. Right, because I originally asked for like heavy <laughs> armor, right? And now I'm... Yeah. yeah. I believe you should be able to wear it, but we can tweak it if not. In place of the usual circular decoration in the center, a decorative metal plate lays, portraying a bowl of healing chicken noodle soup. Yes! Any food spilt on the armor is magically washed off. <laughs> Everything's food! <laughs> I thought about all of you so much! This ar- oh, yeah, no, it's just the bit I forgot to do, uh, unequip. And you attune to it uh, by doing an hour of cooking in it. Oh, so. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the chef-worthy splint. 
Yes. That you should be able to wear. We'll see. Um, he will also hand out a little bracelet to you, Camellia. Um, I figured with your, uh, large aquatic friend, you might, um, you, you might want this. Um, and he gives you this small bracelet. Familiar, too big for their boots. Knocking all over all the people and shelves in their way. This bracelet will help. By placing it upon your familiar, you can reduce their size to one of a large dog or smaller. And for those with difficulty traveling, the ability to roly-poly to their next destination. Yay! You have the Discord chat to thank for that one. Um, <laughs> that is called the Familiar's Bracelet of Social Graces. Um, <laughs> that, you can, that you can add. And I believe for a, for a familiar, you should be able to equip them with it. But if not, it's just there and it's got everything you need in the description. So basically, Winnie can go around at a regular-ish size and travel easily with you guys. Oh, that's going to be so weird for Camellia. She's just a gigantic Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> and then in a fight, you just... You, she just unactivates, you. deactivates it, and no. just fucking... Bruh, 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 and just grows. <laughs> Massive. Um, this whole time, we will say, that uh, Umberlai has been getting dressed in her. <laughs> Because you had some very specific, some very specific asks mm -hmm. uh, for hers. Did I? Where's hers? Her... Oh, I already gave her to hers, and then I was like almost forgotten. I was like, oh no, oh no, where's she gone? Where's Umbala? Oh no, there she is. Oh, oh no, oh no, right? Freaking lost your girlfriend. I was taking I just to Lord. I'm Sorry. like the Terminator. You're more like Sarah Connor. <laughs> Sorry. I love that. <laughs> Stupid. Alright. Uh, you see Umberlai Farnsworth come out. It's hard to call it a thigh slit when it barely meets at the sides of her body at all anywhere mm. on nice. the gown. <laughs> um, uh, the description. While wearing this armor, you gain a plus one to bonus AC. You can also use a bonus action to speak the armor's command word and cause the armor to assume the appearance of a normal set of clothing or some other kind of armor. You decide what it looks like, including color, style, and accessories. But the armor retains its usual bulk and weight. The illusory appearance lasts until you use this property again or remove the armor. That's awesome. She can... She She's can got transmogs. Like she's 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 can look like she's wearing whatever the fuck you wanted to look like she fucking wearing. And uh, what's the command word on that? If you can just. He will whisper it into her ear. <laughs> Do I have any kind of like special listen you power? You can attempt. You can attempt a <laughs> lip reading. Uh, what, um, what is it you... called? Gaze of two minds. You touch a willing humanoid and perceive through its senses until the end of your next turn. Who on yeah. the team, I guess, has got the best uh, perception? No, her. <laughs> what are you talking about? She's... <laughs> no, just... Are you, are, you are you trying to touch me to find out what the command word is, Luto? Yes. Have you considered touching me to find out what the command word is? Yeah, gonna, I'm doing that right now. No, without, without bringing <laughs> your SMIC into it. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, what is the command word? I didn't even say please that time. Okay, you know, late, later, later. I don't want any of these perverts over here pointing at everybody, but mostly Camellia. <laughs> 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 I don't want any of these Damn. perverts over here knowing. 
So a little later, later. But uh, I'll I'll persuade it out of you. Mm-hmm. How much persuasion will it really take, though? This is the question. <laughs> All right. So that is everybody's new stuff. So who cannot yeah. access their stuff? Oh, mine's just not giving me the bonus when I put it on. No. I can't access my stuff. <laughs> okay. I got my stuff. I'm coming. <laughs> First she's our teacher, now she's our mom. She didn't trust us all. <laughs> hey mom, I can't access my stuff. AC Uh it's a bit of... Oh yeah, it's not giving you It's not giving you it's more AC. standing here, got my arms up in the air. <laughs> 12 armor plus 2. No. You should, you should get it. Uh, uh, I, I can't. I, I... You can do it later. Don't yeah. don't forget. I'll, that is I'll... like one of the few things I think I it yeah, would, it would help override, my build a lot. I'll override <laughs> your AC. Um... Oh no, I did it wrong. You now only have one AC because I fucked up. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, one. There you go. You you have one additional AC now. Because <laughs> I, cause I hacked the system. And then Danny! What can't you get, Danny? I did. No, that's what I had before. <laughs> you had 15 before? Yes! That's <laughs> Oh, wait, refresh As it. Was... Did you refresh? I did, yeah, I just did. When I oh, took it no. off, I had 14. When I put it on, it didn't give me anything. It's, it's, it just wasn't giving me an AC at all. Oh, people, please. If I, put the, if I put the old one back on, it works. That one just doesn't work. Yeah. I don't do it now. Okay. Well, we're not, I don't think we're going to get in a fight, so. Just standing yeah. there like a little kid whose shit hasn't been tailored. Just fucking arms are too goddamn long. Fucking sleeves and shit. Just oh, waving so around. Yeah, okay. Um, what can't you access, Val? Uh, I was joking. I didn't receive anything from, from, from the peeps. I was just trying to be funny. Oh, you fucker! <laughs> oh, you I was just trying bitch. to be funny. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Danny the Dapper Dwarf dies. No. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get no, started no, no. on making my new character. No! Okay, so, that's all good. Um, you head over to Itirin's office, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes okay. Yes. Um, you haven't properly been into her office yet. Um... You see, it is this very dark room where the wallpaper with kind of starlight, starlightish patterns on it just very gently shifts. Um, and she's got huge astral. <laughs> Sorry, I had to be really careful how I said that because she got a huge ass. Um, <laughs> She's got huge astral um, technologies behind her. And arts go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, she's a bunny woman. The guy likes to jump, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the... <laughs> so, um, she and, uh, and Ikta sit behind um, her desk and gesture you all to sit on various couches and sofas. Um... Ikta greets you all as you come in, and uh, Danny, as you as you enter, um, you see this rather tall, um, dark, uh, tawny-colored bunny bunny lady with some small glasses and a scholarly, scholarly robe, and uh, she looks to you. 
and stands and makes her way over. I, begin I don't to, uh, believe we've met. I, I begin to bow politely. The pleasure is all mine. Danny the Dapper Dwarf, fetch your service. Is that your full name, Danny? Uh, so, DM, I have a confession to make. <gasps> I don't remember how to say Danny's full name. <laughs> That's a you problem, my guy. <laughs> oh, uh, respectfully, I don't believe I remember how to either. Yeah. Um. You can. It's Larusso. If you if you DM it to me, I can give it a go. <laughs> it's Worcestershire. Wax on, wax off, Danny. Danny Worcestershire. Worcestershire. <laughs> the dre the J is not pronounced the way you think it is. It's Trejo, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm just gonna make up something new. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right, what well, is this is this your surname from before? It's uh my full name is Danetha Saliante. Huh? That's a it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, was that Bonaducci? What? <laughs> My name is Mistress Eterin Air. You may call me Mistress or Master Eterin. It is a pleasure. I've been informed that you are indeed not informed about the matters of which this group partakes in. I've just been kind of following them off and on just to just because what they were doing seemed interesting and potentially profitable. She's gonna roll inside. Okay. Wasn't with us that long. Got to punch a kid. And what do you want? I don't think um, anything I said was a lie. Like <laughs> no, no, it wasn't explicitly. What do you get from following this group, may I ask? How to answer that one? Information? Ludo raises his hand. <laughs> yes, Ludo? He worked for her parents. I think he's kind of like a spy. <laughs> <laughs> Who are your parents, Camellia, if I may ask? Uh, my... Mom is, uh... Rubes is pulling up the notes real quick. Priorly! <laughs> yeah, I know we, you do, right? <laughs> we, are, we are all struggling right now. <sighs> I wasn't ready for that. I know, it's... I can't believe you haven't read the corporate dossier. <laughs> really <laughs> uh, my mom is, uh... Briarly throws. She's a senior management at the Fragmentium in the Feywild. You see uh, Itirin's ears perk up slightly. Ah, uh, that would explain a lot. Mm. The college of... The college? Ball? School on the mind. She's a fucking nerd. Um, <laughs> the Council of Extravagance, correct? Yes. That would make sense. For not such a dapper dwarf would sit before us if it was not. Hmm. What, what did you just say? <laughs> Did she just say not such a dapper dwarf? If she basically said you wouldn't be dapper if you weren't from the court of extravagance. Oh, okay. 
It wasn't a. It wasn't a, a very academic slight. You're okay. You're safe. Okay. <laughs> then, look, we, look, I, I was about to not even care what happened. We were about to roll initiative. <laughs> oh my god. That <laughs> would have been a. That would have been interesting, and you would have had to roll a new character. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Danny. Okay, bye, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Ludo it's raises nice his hand again. Uh. Yes, Luda. What are her parents like? Well, I'm... <laughs> She's very secretive about it, so maybe you seem to know them. Because now Danny works for them, and then she, you know, she was originally a criminal. I and... do not know no. Camelia's parents personally, and this is not exactly a therapy session with which to air these misguidances of communication. Although it is something I would suggest you maybe share with each other. Team building and so. Okay, but they're good guys though? That's what we have to try and figure out. Hmm. To not trust Danny would effectively be to not trust Camellia. But to I... trust either one of them would be putting trust in this fragmentium. Are you both in constant contact with Miss Barley Throws? I'm not currently. I, I am at times pulled back into the Fey, but I do not regularly have contact with her, no. But you could be. Is there anything you would want me to pass along? No, no, it's not that. Um, would you be open to bridging communication between us and them? Uh, you all see it to look slightly amazed. Well, not mazed, but like, oh, shit. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, what is Hiran just said? I, uh, would prefer either no of you. Ludo puts a hand on Camellia's shoulder. Pat, pat. I prefer not, please. Of course. Thank you. Danny? I would not mind being of assistance, but I am not in full control of when and where I am when they pull me back. What I'm hearing is you're willing to no longer work for them. Ooh. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. I, the fragment I've ugh. Danny's a little flustered now. Um She she's I, not she's not like grilling you, but she's being she's friendly, but she's very direct with what she's saying. Yeah. That is who she is. I'm, I'm, unfortunately. I'm, <laughs> I love her, but I would be terrible in conversation with her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm good at what I do with them, and this job is almost all I've ever known. I would not easily part ways with them. And I wouldn't ask you to. Would you be willing to work? with us, separate from any dealings with consort with the Fragmentium. I don't know why I keep wanting to say consortium. It just sounds good. It's a good word. With, with the consortium. <laughs> with the fra that, would you... That's their rival. Oh, <laughs> don't even. Don't, I've already made one corporate. <laughs> <laughs> don't even do any more corporate PowerPoints for d, d Would you be willing to work for a cause that affects all realms and keep any of that 
any and all of that information away from the Fragmentium. Without risking your job there. That would largely depend on the nature of the work you are asking me to do. If it's for the good of the realms, I, I would be willing to to aid you. What Have sort of work are we talking about? Have you seen... She kind of looks more generally to the rest of the group. Have you witnessed any additional tears? Uh, yeah, just on the way here, actually. Right. So you have seen the tears... in the fabric of reality. Danny. I saw something rather strange on our way here, yes. It's possible you came, initially came to our realm through one of those very tears. Those tears, should they grow frequent and large enough, could allow in some horrific forces from other realms. Not even just ours. If there are any in the Fey Realm, it could well affect them, too. But Danny's just not nodding his head at this point, because that is sounding familiar. It was kind of a... kind of a bit of a rush get, getting Danny into, the, into this realm initially, so he doesn't fully remember everything. Mm -hmm. um, but it is ringing bells. The longer those tears are out there, the more power that can flow through. The more that people from either this or other realms can abuse the arcane powers of this realm and do so for evil. What, what do we know of the nature of this power that's seeping through these tears? Not much. It is something we are researching. And your comrades amongst you are part of our group, the Espers, whose job it is to try and prevent any false gods or altars from taking up any space, any room, any power. Yep. In that case, I would be of assistance to you. That is good news, for after all we've told you, it would be either that or modifying your memory significantly enough so you'd remember none of the last 24 hours. This was definitely the preferable option. Uh, I'm just gonna throw this out here. I feel the same. <laughs> hmm. It's a pleasure to have you on the team, Danny. And she goes to shake your hand. I shake hers. Do not disappoint us. Ludo points, and he looks at uh, Camellia, Tarquin, and Bifon. He points at Danny. He's like, oh, breakfast club? You see? Bre breakfast? Breakfast club, yes. A branch of the Espers called the Breakfast Club. It's a good name, right? It's, it's, uh, something. And speaking of something, you sent a, a strange woman here after your departure from the prison. Hmm. The prison guards were very upset about everything. What was her name? Uh, Ikta pipes up. Sally, the uh, human quote unquote woman. They the said. The one jumped us? DM. From the sound? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, we brought her back. 
we didn't really know what to do with her, so we asked her some questions, but she wasn't letting anything letting anything out of the bag, so we sent her back there. We'll let her stew for a bit and hopefully some time in that uh God's forsaken place will help loosen her lips somewhat. But you will be happy to know that in the meantime, we have a smaller lead. Not a considerable go and destroy this false god kind of deal, but something that we feel is suspicious enough that it could be related. If, hello. If you're all willing. That's what we're here ship. for. We've got an airship ready for you right now. Uh, it's not far travel. Um, and ideally, you wouldn't be away for too long. Uh, boss, if mm -hmm. it's okay to request, this is like very dangerous, very needs, it really needs heroes, very difficult. It shouldn't be, no. But I oh. would definitely do with your group's insight and knowledge. You know what to look out for. Well, actually, uh, I think you misunderstood me. Uh, last time you sent us to pick up a man, and uh, I kind of thought, you know, we'd be fighting demons, maybe big <laughs> manticore or something. And Tyrion leans back in her chair and just face palms. Icta uh, steps in. Uh, we, when we spoke to you, you asked or mentioned about Luca going to Jinwa to go and fulfill whatever deal it was that you'd done to bring her back. Mm -hmm. We wanted to give you something to do that would mean that we were letting you do that, but without being like, yeah, just go and have a holiday in Jinwa. Have a great time. You know, we, we wanted it to be somewhat productive. It was very fun, actually. Oh, good. That's good. But you have also assisted the cause. Bardemos will be a very useful asset to your team. But okay. there will be a more proactive effort towards our goals with this mission. All right. So I'm talking about. Not towards our goals, it will still be useful. Big monster. Hey, Esther, you like jewelry? Do I like jewelry? Yeah. Uh. No, well, I mean I do, but I can't really wear it because it jingles. It gets okay. Spotted cool. Easily. It's Aaron. Um. What's an SMIC? Oh, good question. An Esimic or Esimic? Esimic, the god. You tell me. <laughs> She's gonna insight check Ludo. <laughs> Immediately, Ludo being the one to correct someone on like a, a on a person or a name. That's fucking sus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool. I don't know, you know. <laughs> Let me check what. Her stat addition is. She's fucking mad. Mad powerful. I love her. She's my bunny lady. Nerd lady. Socially not very adept lady. Ew. Um, that's not as high as I thought. Um, so great socially. That's a 21. <laughs> um. Mm. Ludo. Yeah. Did you do a deal with Asimir? Yeah. Wow. How'd you know that? <sighs> You're good. I take it none of you were present at the time. Oh, believe me, if I was, it would have gone entirely differently. Yeah, everyone's been really kind of a downer about it, to be honest. Mm. 
Why do you think that is, Ludo? I don't know. I think they don't know, Esamik. I think they think maybe it's going to affect them somehow. But, I mean, I'm still doing my job. I keep everybody safe. I keep everybody healed. I do the job. I don't understand why everybody's so mad. We know you have good intentions, Ludo. You would not be here were it not for that. Esamik is a difficult deity. Where Actilaneth is a better example of a bad bunch, arguably Esamik is a more morally grey member of a good bunch. Though they are an angelic celestial deity, there is a lot that they know and they see. It's a concerning so... amount. I mean, it's already been useful to us. That's good. Concerning, but good. So if I was a follower of Esamik, I would not be allowed to join? It would require a much heavier-handed vetting process. Huh. Esamik will watch over and guide you as long as you have faith in them. He says that a lot. In, well, in moments when you have faith, um, and yielding faith into their requests or commands, their bond with you grows. And as that bond grows, so do your powers, and their trust is earned, and you are closer and closer to your goal. But the more and more demands that are made. Without faith, it's not impossible to reach your goal, but it may be reached in a way that is ideal for nobody. Except Esamek. Say you wished for peace in the world. As a broad example, if Esamek told you the right thing to do would be to kill a person, and you killed them without doubt, without fear, they would, they would reward you with power and sight and knowing some of the things that they know and they see. And as those requests grow bolder, maybe it's a king you're asked to kill, or a group of children, or an entire town. So shall they eventually bring peace upon the world. If you lose your faith in Esme, they would bring peace about the world by killing everyone in it. For example. Okay. It's my turn. Uh, for, uh, y yes. He turned so he's not just facing Ethereum, but also the rest of the group. Esamik is like a friend. Of course, if I need something from a friend and they need something back, I'm going to do that. Why wouldn't it? I, I would do the same for any of you. If a friend helps me, I'm going to help them. And if a friend tells me to do something that I should not do, that is wrong, I will not do that. And if that friend becomes an enemy, I would stop that friend. I expect the same thing with all of you to do to me. If I cook you food and you like it, then you eat it, that's nice. Then you be nice to me because I cook you food. And then if suddenly I cook you food and I tell you, by the way, there's poison in that and you don't want to eat it. Uh, 
of course, that's the way you're gonna act. Look, have I done anything to make any of you think that I can't do my job? Have, did I not defend you or fight hard in that fight uh, that we had in the town? That is a good point. If ever I give you reason to doubt, if ever I do anything that makes you think that I can't do my job or my responsibilities, then you can say something. Until then, uh, I, I trust him, he trusts me, and uh, it's not a problem. I appreciate your candor. I trust you will not make the wrong decision. Of course I will. We all make wrong decisions. I trust my friends will be there to help me when I do. But should things go wrong, we are here. We have experts here that may be able to help you. Just remember, okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. For now, I mean, I don't know. Backs too. He's really nice. He gives really nice hugs. Very soft. Okay. Feathers really warm. Ah, uh, the feathers. Yes. Um, should you also uh, lose faith or try to leave the grasp of Esamek, those who do not survive are turned into the feathers that adorn their wings. Hmm. Better than being a body in a box in the ground. Hmm. You are you one who Jura? thinks inside the box. Um, somewhat. He's he's got a uh, he's got a gift of gab. I will give him that. She kind of smiles slightly. It's been a very fraught and frankly shit few weeks oh he says shit well, we had a pretty good time we gotta see a play you must tell me more of that once you return from your next quest i am going to lay down and write some notes in my journal uh ikta if you could fill the group in on their next mission that would be appreciated of course! Okay! Uh, ominous deities and gods, partly aside, maybe. Uh, your next quest, should you choose to accept it. Yeah, sorry, I had to say that. Um, you do kind of have to accept it. It's your job. We'll, we'll, we'll pay you for it, though. Um, so. Uh, you're from Yadash, right, Tarquin? Yes. Okay, you might be familiar with this place, then. Um, there is a place kind of in the central south area of uh, Yadash that is called uh, Vinefell Creek. It is just the teeny tiniest, smallest village. It's effectively a hamlet. Uh, and they have been very concerned about a missing child. Um, with a village so small, it is strange for a child to go missing and for there to be so much suspicion between all of the different neighbors as to if any of them were involved, who did it, what have you. Our scouts have also been sensing some strange archonic activity in that region, and so we figure it would be best to just make sure that there is nothing going on there. Uh, best case scenario, it's just a monsty and you can murder it and it'll all be good. You'll be super victorious. The town will be thankful, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and maybe we find out some stuff about uh, the altars. Worst case scenario, well, it, it, there is an altar there and it's really big and scary and terrible and you need to call for backup. But if you do, we'll be here. Uh, that all sound good? Wonderful. Also Not a chance to, to visit home. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
Uh, there is a smaller airship set up for you. It's just a pickup drop-off deal because it it would only take a couple of hours or a few hours to walk there, but with the mountain, obviously that adds a significant amount of time and effort and energy, and we don't want to do that. So uh, we'll ship you down there real fast. And uh, yeah, I will hand you guys this, which she hands... Um, She'll hand the Sending Stone to... She'll hand it to Tarquin. If you have any pertinent updates or need anything from us, let us know. Uh, give us updates every day or so. If you can. And, uh... By the time you get back, we will have more uh, finances ready for you. And something ready for you as well, Danny. Hopefully. So... Is that all right? Thank you very much. Of course. Are you ready? Updated. Are you ready for immediate departure? Mm, sure. I okay. guess so. Okay. Uh, Pithy will accompany you on the journey. Um, and uh, we shall see you soon. And with that, um, she kind of uh, points you to uh, the docking area where instead of um, Barbanus's ship, you see a much smaller vessel just for a few people. Just teeny tiny Aww. sloop, sloop airship. Um, and sloop a paddle ship. jumper. <laughs> exactly. Um, and you all get on. Um, just before Umberlai gets on, um, she'll look to you, Ludo, and say, I'm gonna sit this one out, if that's okay. Yeah? Uh, it's just... <sighs> Icta said, um, Octol might be coming back soon, and I think it would be good for him to have a friend here when he comes back. Ah, oh, yeah, poor guy. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But uh, I'll be around, so with the Sending Stone you can send me a message and I'll pass it along and I'll send you one back. And, and she just gives you a big hug. Okay, looking forward to it. Also, I'm terrible at camping, so it's probably for the best. I just ruin the entire time. Oh, we gotta go um, camping? No, there's like nothing in the town, so it's pretty empty. But uh, you all have a good time. Stay safe, okay? Uh, Pithy, don't fall off the ship. I will. How does she know that's happened before? It's crazy. And um, Pithy's coming. <gasps> yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming just to just to escort you on the on the airship. Ah. I'll probably head back. I've got a mission briefing to do. She gives a little salute. <laughs> okay. And we shall quickly, because it's only a very short airship journey, like 20 minutes or so. Because it's mostly just down. <laughs> I think we can swap to... The new map? the new background. Let's do it. Yeah. So. Background reveal. For the first time. So exciting. For, the, for weirdly the first time. We are Landward Ho. Hold on, I gotta find hold on. We're at wait, wait. sea level. <laughs> we are at Level. All right, we've been like in like mountains and sky islands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easier to breathe now. Oh, I know, like all of our ears pop. <laughs> <You're> just... <laughs> all right, guys. Hey. At least one person passes out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I, I love the sparkly waters. I love sea level. Oh yeah, I don't know why the water's there. 
It's not meant to be. Oh, that's fine. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a little. I thought it was like a little lakey lake or something. Sure, oh. it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I will fix that for next time. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it looks like the sky is being reflected through it. Oh my God, not meant to be there. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it was very last minute, but. It's just one of those wet spots, not a full on <laughs> lake or anything. Forest wet spot. A little marshy. It's a little yeah. marshy marsh. Yeah, there you moist, go. Marsh. Moist patch. Thank you. Oh, this it's, is a, it's a marsh time. named Marsh. This is a terrible time for words to crash as I'm about to give you the fucking mission briefing. Oh. <laughs> it's being in Marsh Marsh. Marsh Marsh. Oh, yeah, and it's a lot warmer. <laughs> like, it feels a lot more springtime. The air vibes. is just heavier. Not massively heavier. Like, there's... like, what's what's the humidity? Again, not massive because um, <laughs> the beautiful thing about your dash is the main continent is pretty much just outlined by ocean. So it all and it a lot of it's flatlands. So uh, unless you're kind of in the marshes up towards the north and towards the center, we're just like slightly south of that. Um, then you're not going to hit particularly humid or sweaty, sweaty spots. Um, so it's very much kind of spring breeze in a foresty, foresty place right now, which is beautiful. All right, so we are heading. Everybody, welcome to Vinefell Creek. We will be landing shortly, but until we do, I don't know even what this is. That's not a thing that exists. Um... Mm -hmm. It is a small no, hamlet. It's cool. Oh, thanks. It is a it is a small hamlet uh, in the region of Ospra in the continent of Yadash. And uh, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to find one missing child by the name of Kinry Mosswater. Huh. Kinry Mosswater. They are uh, nine years of age and they were last seen approximately five days ago i think i can't remember honestly and i forgot my clipboard don't tell anyone um the town is incredibly small um you have the rest of the of the mosswater family you have the parents felici and rivan uh, you also have Still, who is the tiny, tiny toddler of the family. Um, they are a, um, they are a full-time family, pretty much. Uh, so, that's, that's them. I'm gonna slowly copy and paste their names into chat. <laughs> Melissi. Navidad. I should have called them true. No, it's such a, um, that's a weird thing to say, Tippy. <laughs> <laughs> Felici, Ravon, and Still in the Mosswater family. Uh, there is also the Owsley family, uh, who are a farming family. Uh, Owsley. Uh, there is also um, the Didis family. Didis? Did Diddy? I don't know. You will have to find that out. Part of your investigation. Uh, and there is also Horace Grassbeam. You've got Effie Bloom. Uh, Rian Frostel, who's a fisherman. And then just a couple of others. And that's like the whole town. That's it. It's pretty, pretty freaking small. Um, that's, that, that's just a village. <laughs> yeah, they don't have like an inn or anything, which is why... Your guys are gonna go camping! Um, but apparently they have a really good spot that they will show you, so... Um, Biffy? That's all good. Yeah, what's up? I'm all for saving kids, but why is Kinry so important? Well... Because they're... Are, are you trying to find reasons we shouldn't be saving a child? I wasn't aware that was what we do. I thought we were closing veils and saving the world. 
I I'm fine. I'm happy to save a kid. Just wondering if they have any kind of greater significance that maybe we should know about? Well, this area has been highlighted as a potential arconic hotspot. So, the likelihood that there is, like, um, some weird anomalies going on and stuff, like veil tears and demons and spirits and stuff, is pretty high. So... Okay. There's been a lot of suspicious activity. This investigation could potentially lead us further towards that without openly just being like, Hey guys, don't mind us. We're digging up the ground to see if we can find anything weird and making everyone concerned about that. Small communities in particular usually don't like that. Yeah. We, we don't want to... We don't want to rouse too much suspicion. Because if people start thinking that there are tales in the very veil of reality and that we're investigating to see if there are false gods that want to eat people it's going to be a bad time so if we can solve it without too many people knowing it's going to be better okay. good me. cool um, and as you say that the little airship sloop lands in this dense forest okay uh give us a call on the sending stone the night before you wanna well whenever you want us to come pick you up it shouldn't take too long um anything else before i go i'm good good ready okay you did great. Um, thanks watch out for monsters okay bye you do. Well, no. <laughs> Shoots back off into the sky. And before you lies the tiny hamlet town of Vinefell Creek, which is where we will leave this episode. Yay! Woo! Yes, I'll put all the names in the chat after, in the thing after. Po poke me and feel free to remind me because I will forget. Because I die after D and D sessions. Oof. <laughs> Good session. Oh, one, two, three. Yeah, that's four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, there's like sixteen people in this in this uh, okay in this town hamlet. Yeah, we're if practically that. we're practically increasing the population of the area by an additional four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Oh, and yeah, Danny's got the flu, right? Yeah. In the brain. <laughs> as yeah. as you all arrive in town, Danny's like, "Oh, this place looks." <laughs> <laughs> gets oh, hey, taken hey, let's, back. Let's <laughs> let's properly let's properly roleplay this. <laughs> oh my, what a very interesting place. We <laughs> you the yeah. <laughs> Do I have to hang up now? <laughs> yeah, fuck off. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, Ludo just looks at uh, Camellia and waits. What? You're gonna explain what just happened there? Or? Oh, uh, I think you got called back to work. Huh. Yeah. That's gonna happen Thank all you. the time? Can that happen to you? I hope that it's not happening. <sighs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think if Rube's a heart attack. Oh my god. <laughs> Rube's, you just hear a. Like, no! <laughs> it's like them portals opening up in Kingdom Hearts. It's, it's like, no! I'm not going! You can't make me! <laughs> uh, I don't expect me. So, um... Uh, oh, no, I I, find out. For everyone in chat, I do have some bad news. I will not be able to be here next week due to work. Much yeah. like Danny himself, capitalism calls me. Well, then I don't even want to do it! <laughs> <laughs> 
I know. I'm sorry. Harumph. It's okay, though, because yeah. Jenny's here the whole time. Jenny was here the whole time. Let's <laughs> this music. I'm just like... The whole, the whole time. <laughs> gonna be sleeping in the woods. Just hear some noise. Oh, shit, is Danny back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just hear. It's like, Danny? Is that you? <laughs> Danny, you better not Danny. be fucking with us, Danny. <laughs> Yes, oh. Danny. Danny is a tropical bird, last time we checked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I could probably pull that off. You just give me some time to practice. Hey, oh. <laughs> so... Hoping to get back real soon. Lots, lots of little lore drops today. Lots of yeah. little, little, little interesting titty bitties today. Lots of, a, lot, a lot of stuff happened. A lot of stuff happened. A lot of a lot of ground covered. Mm -hmm. Any any new suspicions? Any new doubts? Concerns? Any theories for where Kinray has gone? Oh, they're probably the swamp somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Eaten by a gru? No, okay. fell down the well. <gasps> no. <laughs> Probably fell into a veil, maybe? Could it be a thing? Oh, that would be fucked. If I fell into a tear? Yeah. <laughs> we hope that's what happened to Kintakanasta, right? It's a, it's, it's <laughs> a, it's Flew into a veil. <laughs> yeah. It's a, probably, it's probably a fool's hope, but you know, a, a dwarf can dream. A dwarf can dream. My suspicions of Esmix alignment has been confirmed. It has. So the place of um, the place where now is where Tarquin is from. Yes. So in 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 the world, um, in the. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so, you were about to go full National Geographic on <laughs> in, in the world. So here. I'm terrible at geography. So there's a mix of continents and regions some places look like a continent but they're a region some places are continents but also have regions yada yada um yadash is a continent and one of the regions in yadash is Ospra, which is named after the capital city which is Ospra, which is confusing I'm, but I'm that's the kind of I'm... real life <laughs> shit that happens with naming conventions for right. geography so um, There's a person who lives in United States, United States. I know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Look, as someone who lives in Yorktown in the region of York... <laughs> <laughs> you Yorkish person. Oh my god. I'm never gonna forget oh, that. That brings back it's memories, fucking yeah. fucking seven years ago. Just, I'm a Yorkish person. It's like, what? I, I, just, I didn't know what they were called. <laughs> no, it was great. Yorkish is what they should be called. Um, oh, I so... see. Yadash is the eastern, northern continent. We've been yes. we've been in Yadash this yeah. whole time. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lorraine Ospra is a... is the country that we've been in this entire time. Yeah, country, region, vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> gotcha. It's pretty pretty flexible, you know. The world the the, the world was only you know pieced back together supposedly few hundred years ago so still relatively but we're closer to Lorraine in. now I guess uh, you've been in Lorraine um, you're now okay. closer to Osprey so you're more close to the okay. western coast um, so there's so kind of like, like in the middle. yeah there's kind of like the little egg bit where it, uh, the peak is Osprey city and then we're like mm. three quarters down the center from that um, okay Kind of uh, southwest of Ninut, um, and down a big old fucking mountain <laughs> to boot. So you could probably, if you looked real close with a telescope, you could probably see this area of um, not this specific town, but like you can see a lot of Yadash from Ninut because Yadash is flat and Yadash is flat. Um, Yadash is flat and <laughs> Ninut's on a mountain. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, 
I think that answered the question. And if not, please remind me what the question was. <laughs> 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 Kindly. I am but an old DM confused. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, so um, Tarquin is from just north west of here. More north than west. Like north northwest of here. Can we get like a, uh, uh, like, you know, we have the, we have these images for all the different locations. Can we get one yeah. sometime of like uh, the world map? And then we can move like a little token around to show like where we are. Of giving you the world map. A little you are here. No, but I mean Dancing. like to put on the screen, yeah. to put on the screen for Ew. everybody. Fuck yes. Um. Oh fuck. Where's the where's the goddamn map? Um. Where is the map of God's damn? <laughs> well, I meant like uh, for transitional periods, when not when we're not just in one area, like we can have like a similar oh, portal yeah, like, thing. Like yeah. traveling, <gasps> like when yeah. we're traveling. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me do a real butcher butchered one for now, because I've got the real stylistic map that you can't fucking read for shit. Um. So I'll use this one for now. Hit when print screen decides, or oh, snip snip and sketch decides it wants to work. There we go. Whee! I'll circle. Oh jeez, it's real small. <laughs> um, where's it going? Don't be like this. Don't do this to me, snip and sketch. Why do this to me? Thank you. No, come back. <laughs> Snip and sketch, why? Uh, my computer's like, you're writing too much shit! <laughs> okay, maybe... Uh, yes, okay. Very slowly, but surely. Yeah, what? Um. Hey, uh, Tarquin. Nermal said she said come back when you remember her. That's pretty mm. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got Tarquin's got a lot of friends that are somewhere, and we don't quite know where. <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, there is a bit too much gap there between uh, that and the, and then Loren. Jinwa is kinda. Uh, no, it's not. Are you show? Are you showing something I'm supposed to be looking at right now? No, I'm. I'm getting. I'm getting there. Don't worry. Oh, okay. I. I will though. It's just the. It's a very big map and very small dots. <laughs> okay, I'll copy it and send it to you. And then I will do a zoomed in version because <laughs> you can't fucking see it for shit. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, the red dot is where we are. The purple dot is Ninu. And the pink dot is. Uh, is Jinwa. Oh, those dots are small. There we go. I know, I've got a zoomed in version. Do not worry. All right, let me put this on the stream. I can't wait to go to some Provni where everyone speaks like this. <laughs> so this is the giant map. And then all the way over there, if you can see it, those little red dot, the red dot and the black dot, which one is which again? Uh, red is where we are, the purplish dot is where Ninut is, and then the pink dot is where J Jinwa is, kind of. So we're kind of <laughs> in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> Neat. When you put it like that. <laughs> yeah. How do I make this even where? Bigger? And you said Tarquin's in the northwest? In the so, water? kind of, if you go... There's not meant to be water there. Um, <laughs> if you kind of go up from the red dot and 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 then meet it in oh. the middle with the with the purple dot, 
you kind of it's it's on the the kind oh, of are, uh, on that little peninsula it's on that little there. peninsula thing yeah 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 it's it's okay. slight slightly lower than that but yeah because okay. there isn't i was a wondering no because you said you said west yeah. and i'm like oh wait oh wait no it's you that's right okay so you meant east gotcha <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> What's no, it's actually something that's come up like a lot lately. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. No, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> I'll put a green dot where Tarquin's from. Where is the? What yeah. is the pink dot? The pink dot is. That's Jinwa. where we were. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Jinwa. Okay, we flew from and there. And then, if you go up from Jinwa, there's like a little scattered bit of islands just to the actual west. And that's where Ash Sky is. Oh, that's where Ash Sky is. Okay. Where's Ludo from? Uh, your mom. Uh, <laughs> the... <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely that. brilliant. Like golden. <laughs> the Chenny Isles, which I will put in orange and send you. Oh, updated pictures. And then. I mean, I don't know if Bifon's can we put like Bifon and said Cam where he's said. Uh, Camellia where he's and from. Danny are from space, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're from a different realm. <laughs> space. I think it came up once. Um, yeah. I've only ever. Uh, I think it was uh, when I was shopping for weapons. I was asking if they had any Tolan wood. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. I'm from the west. Like the West. The actual West. Like, like America? <laughs> I, was about to, I was about to say, your West or Keys West? Uh, it's from, like, <laughs> uh, Canada. No, he's from... Oh. Yeah, I'd probably be somewhere between the US and Canada. Yeah. Like right around uh, here-ish. Tauldron, I would imagine you're kind of somewhere attached to the T of Tauldron. Kind of I figured I was like in the area. middle somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Kind of slightly... Maybe under the crook of the T and the left hand side of the cross of the T. Okay, so there's this picture. Which yeah. <laughs> um, very technical world building right here. So the purple dot is Ninut. The red dot is where we are. Oh god, we're having maps on top of maps. The green dot hurt. is where Tarquin is from. Yeah. The orange, and the orange dot. dot is your mom. Oh, shit! <laughs> I'm from the orange dot. And it's kind of like... Uh, you know, I thought she passed away. Greenland. <laughs> no, Kenny she's out Isles. there right now making making mm. delicious... This guy. Uh, what, like probably banana pies or something? Hell, mm. hell yeah. I don't know. I don't have your parental war. Yeah, making banana I, pie. That's fine. I have Tarquin and... Um, no offense. Uh, I have Tarquin and uh, Camellia's parental lore. And uh, Danny's. Do you require parental lore? If you would like to include it, it is not a requirement. Okay. I, I can comp some. Fun! Parents are fucking cool. Maps. The coolest parents ever. Man. Man. But the Chenny Isles that are, even though they look like they're in Yadash, are actually from a more southern, southerly continent of this guy. Just politics is the reason for that. Don't don't ask. Well, it's <laughs> yeah. Politics does weird things to geography. Yep. So does uh, theorized. There was one time that the. All the continents floated away. <laughs> Into space? Yeah. Alright, Rubes, explain. I can't see that. Huh? Um, oh, I would God. like to summon Winnie, and <laughs> she's gonna roly poly everywhere. Yay! <laughs> what do I have to roll for that? <laughs> Rubes, is that you? What? I'm in jail! <laughs> <laughs> I could be so much more insulting, but I don't want to be. I have no, a new neighbor. I feel, I feel like I have a new neighbor. 
<laughs> Hi. Hey, Danny, since now you're part of the team, do you want to buy this map? It has all the autographs of all the continents. I'm good, thank you. I've uh, not really been one for, for mappage. <laughs> I would be curious to see how someone relatively new to D&D would, would DM a campaign. But now that I'm saying that, technically it's not far off from what I'm doing anyway, so... Uh... <laughs> no, I've done one campaign all the way through. That's, that's enough, right? I'm qualified. That's huge. Yeah. Yes. I mean, getting a campaign? Hey, yeah. yeah. Look, I was about to say, it's like the fact that you've even completed a campaign can be something of a rarity. Yeah, hugely. Yeah. I, look, I, I, that was the campaign that I got killed by a shelf. So, you know, it's a miracle I made it through that campaign. A shelf? Well, technically the shelf didn't kill me. It was the golem that pushed the shelf onto me that killed me. Hmm. But yes, a shelf killed me. It, I failed all my death saving throws. I have not, as a player, rolled a death saving throw and not gotten a natural one yet. Every time I've rolled a death save, I've rolled a natural one. Sounds like the dice are against you. Yeah, a little bit. Fucking died twice. <laughs> Permanently. Well, thankfully, the, the shelf, I died in a magic shop, so there was a potion right there. I was like, alright. <laughs> Actually, technically, I died twice in that campaign because I died at the end of it as well. That one was by choice, though, and because I did a clutch, my my single clutch thing in the entire fucking campaign. <laughs> you're Jesus. You're not. You're not meant for the world. You're meant to be a god. Uh, so you could ascend to DM hood. Yeah, I am. I am. That's the. You've sussed out my plot. I am the the biggest altar there is. I knew it! I, I transmogrified by uh, being f fucking incapable. <laughs> 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 and now I'm here. Um, deal with it, bitches. He's the real Esamek, yeah. I knew it. <laughs> Only. Maybe the real yeah. Esamek is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Alright, it's been five and a half hours. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Sorry, it's funny. Has it really been that long? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's how I know it's been a good game. Yeah. <laughs> it's when time is no longer a real concept, but also sorry it's been so long. It's always a good game. Yeah, what's going to happen next week as we go to Vinefell Creek? Can we find Will the kid without find... punching it? We'll find out. Henry Mosswater. <laughs> I've got great news for you there, JC. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I will allow one roll to, for summoning Danny just for a punch in a kid's general direction if it's needed. Damn, I also comes out the fog. In, it's just it's just the beginning of Baldur's Gate, but Gale like his hand coming out the portal, but it's just a punch. <laughs> And just, hey, and then just look, listen. If 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 I'm, I'm I just suddenly became Navi for a second. I know I was. Um, I tried not to say anything. <laughs> hey, uh, if 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 I'm gonna be punching children, I want to be here for it. <laughs> is 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 that too much to ask? Am I being too greedy? It's very entitled of you, Val, but I can see the validity in your statement. Yeah. I I I sorry. I know I'm just spoiling all the fun now. <laughs> But no, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you again for the level seven hop train. Um, I've got a little some, got a couple. I think that's a couple little special things we've got to organize for that. So stay tuned. Um, what will happen next week? Will anyone punch a child? Will we find Kinry Mosswater? And is Vinefell Creek? Will we it seems. will we punch Kenry Mosswater? Yeah. It's a very important question. Yeah. Or Danny. With <laughs> <laughs> In Tales of the Torn Veil, anything's possible. 
But until next time, look out for yourself. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Look out for yourselves. Look out for other people. Look after yourselves and look after other people. Be kind. Be compassionate. Be magic. I keep saying profound things in these and then forgetting what they are and forgetting to write them down. So listen to me in the past. Go and let like comment and subscribe on the podcast on youtube and uh we'll see you soon in a week should we do this again in a week this yeah week again in a week and and fire vows work please bye everybody thanks for the level <gasps> seven god dang <gasps> bye, bye, bye. Thank you so bye much. everyone thank you so much bye. Bye.